July 25th, 2023. You know what? It's July 25th. No, I'm in the first camera. Well, they don't do it then. It is July 25th, 2023, 11 a.m. We're in Golden Court in Hadley, Massachusetts. This is a meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority. Colleen, please. Yeah, please, everybody. So this, this is a serious business meeting, and I'd really appreciate it if, uh, no matter how angry you're getting, raise your hand if you need to just speak. The first item, agenda item is topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Do we have any topics that are not on the agenda? Sue? Yes, we asked for this month's agenda to have the the common area policy and the grounds policy and I did, wasn't included. I apologize for that. I did text Pam Creek about that. I think we got really late towards the posting deadline. And so it's possible that it didn't make the deadline. Or did not make the deadline. Yeah. Right. So we'll have to either talk about that under other topics or um, under the commissioner's discussion. Well, but, so the yeah. independent audit, which was tabled a few times and didn't show up here. Yeah. One. It wasn't taken. There was a vote. Right. There was a vote on an independent vote. That's what I was doing. And it's reflecting both. Yeah, I'm afraid my solution to the independent audit request was to have Gary Pace come in and explain how they do things here. I need to learn. We all need to have something to learn. And if you still feel like the independent order makes sense, then we can vote on that and discuss that and vote on that again. Yeah. This threatening letter that went out to tenants. Stop. Why don't we talk about that? I'm going to bring it up because uh, it's not on the agenda. So, what other point could I bring it up? I'm going to bring it up to the executive di director that's the day to day operation. So, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Not so. No, it deals with policy because it does not to deal with policy. But there's day to day operations. But there's two policies attached to it, and that's a board. That's board business. But the board doesn't no. step in with the current operations of that. I'd, I'd be happy to speak with you about it afterwards. So. I prefer to speak with it. It's the day to day operations. I the house of that. So, what do you have to do? I can, day. I can finish, Madam Commissioner. <laughs> That's the day to day operations. I am contractually given that, that responsibility. I would love to talk to you about it. You have not reached out to me. I would talk to you about it. Not I'm saying I disagree. So what happens when I disagree with the fact because of the fact that it, policies are attached to it, and one of the jobs of board members is to deal with policy. Your then, policy is to implement policy. That those are current policies, and those policies are are followed 100 percent in that notice to the tenants. So we have That's a current a, policy. We have an initiative right now to review policies. We don't no, need... this particular policy, that this mean threatening policy that went to yeah, people's right. doors. If you want to discuss that under commissioner's discussion, the policy, that's fine. So yes. that's, why don't you take that up with Pamela? And if you're not satisfied with her explanation, uh, bring it back to the board. Would that be okay, Sue? No, it's not. No? Not okay with me that I have to speak with her about it. Okay. Because I've already spoke to Mary Billion. About Mary Billion's not the executive director of the But she's the director. She it, right, but there is there is a full chart on job responsibilities. Dave, you have offered to put it in the commissioner's discussion. That's where I would like to have it. So let, let's give it a shot on the commissioner's discussion. Okay, we'll try to stay to the policy. That's not 48 hours notice. Uh it violates open the hang law. However, if the commissioner, who's also a tenant, would like to uh, bring it under public comment, otherwise we're in violation of open meeting law. The agenda's been published. Your complaint came out before the agenda was published. However, you know, so it, it, it's not that it uh, was after the agenda. Your concern was after the agenda. It came out before. It didn't get in for whatever reason, and your communication with the chair did not get into the agenda. So it can come under public comments, and you may speak as a tenant. So I'm going to suggest this. I think it would make sense for you to meet with the executive director and one, at least one member of the policy review committee. We don't have a policy review committee. Yes, we do. 
Yes, we do. So wait. keep a uh, yeah. the policy review committee. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wait till that come about. I no, November, December. You were present at the meeting when that was done. That was only for that one particular. No, it was not. We are the policy and procedure subcommittee, and we would be happy. In fact, the policy and procedure subcommittee will be meeting within two weeks to review local policies. And so if you have a policy as a tenant, that you have a policy that you're concerned about, please let either me or Rich know so we can review it. Then we will bring in uh, the, the, the situation to the tenants and ask for input. No, I have a concern that I'm on this board and have no idea that this group exists except for that one particular It was policy. in the minutes available in your board binder that you received, you said from John Allen, and, and so you have access to all the minutes yeah, going I think we have to look at that again, because other people, you're on many things, the community preservation, you meet with the treasurer. A lot of us aren't on any committees at all, and you're on a lot of different committees. So would you like And to I really you? think that we need to start including other people that are on this board. So would you like to serve on the uh, policy review committee? She cannot, because that would equal a quorum. We can only have two people on a subcommittee because of the quorum open meeting law rules. I have a question, Mr. Chairman, for yes. this, since ten, uh, our tenant representative on the board is Risa, um, and you represent the tenants, not administration. Are no, you at all, I, cons you at all no, concerned about not this? True. I think are you at all concerned about this, Larry? I think that you have a misunderstanding about my role. I am a tenant mm. who, <laughs> under state law, uh, one tenant has to be on the board of commissioners. I was appointed by the town to be that tenant who serves on the board of commissioners. I represent to the board of commissioners the tenant's perspective. And I meet with, uh, with tenants. Tenants can, are free to come to me and talk to me about their concerns. We do have two tenants here who will not speak to me. And um, they have their own complaints, which I don't know what they are unless they say them here. But anyway, any tenant can come to me. So I think that. you're, despite your training that you took, you still misunderstand the role of the tenant rep on the Board of Commissioners. But it's been clear to me over the last handful of meetings that we've had, you speak more coming from the administrative standpoint than from the tenant representative on this board. Just my observation. That's all I'm going to say. That, well, guys, we're going to have to move on. Um, I'm not happy with the fact that these two are, are on the board. Because of, I want you to, if you don't mind, stating all the different boards that you're on at the moment. You're on the Community Preservation Commission. You're, you're, you're a treasurer. You're also meeting with Karen Mommelly. And, and there was one other one. I'm a treasurer. I have to meet with Karen. No, I know, but I'm just saying you're choosing. What other? There was one more. It's, it, there has to be a fairness about the jobs that are... Uh, but you don't want to serve, serve. No, but you just said I can't because there's a big forum. No, no, you can't. If you want to serve on a subcommittee, bring it up. I want to serve on the policy yes. subcommittee. Yes, can we get back to the agenda because yes. this is very right. disruptive. All right, why don't we um, find out that it's for you on the policy committee soon. It's not disruptive. Hey, guys? No, you just don't want to get an answer. Um, mm -hmm. Everything I'm hearing is reasonable. So if there's a complaint about a policy, it should be brought to the whole board through the policy committee. But I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble with the policy committee and how it's created. I didn't okay. know it was that, created. That could be an agenda item in future, so okay. Oh, no, I'm here with it now. It's not right. Pushing um, aside. minutes. Right. I need to do what I need. We're following that. Yeah, yeah. we we'll following we have a single of minutes, please. Has everybody read the minutes from May 30th and June 29th. Um, uh, uh, has everybody read the minutes? Any changes? 
Yeah. Let me see you all read them carefully. Are there any changes? No, these are uh, the minutes from May 30th are actually co uh, corrected by the scribe. Okay. And uh, I found no errors of any substance. Thank so you. I make a motion that we approve the minutes from May 30th as they have been corrected and read that. All right, we'll, we'll do them separately. Well, no, 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 you can, yeah, do the minutes. Your motion is to approve the May 30th. My we motion is to second to approve. Approval of the main do a second on that. On May 30th? Yes. Well, page three, where it says Harry Chadwick asked which will be 84,000 overage on the budget of 2022. And Pamela Rogers said she would investigate what drove the overage. What has there been an investigation and can you respond to that? This wouldn't be the right time. This is about the approval of the numbers. Well, that can. It's, but it's but I'm not approving it because there's a few things I'd like to, to set. So I don't think it's worth being up to approve. Everything is being shot down. Mm -hmm. Well, ma'am, there's a certain there's, there's, there's a certain procedure that happens at business meetings. And, we, and at the business meeting, this this line item is you're approving the minutes. There's that's not what a, I'm, no, so you're can, asking for further. You can ask your question, but if the minutes are correct. I'd like to correct, correct on page four once again. Stating that there's three vacancies in Gold Court, and there's five this month and five last month. That needs to be corrected. There, there is a number of vacancies need to be corrected. May correct. Uh, back in May. Yeah. No, no it, in May, that's correct. The minutes are correct. That's of May 30th. So, so this is the June meeting I'm talking about. Well, we're talking about May. May. Is May 30th. Oh, I thought we did that. I don't have a second yet to approve the May. Yes, Rich. I said, okay, I said, I said Rich, didn't hear you. Yeah. Any other discussion on the May 30th? <laughs> if not, all those in favor of approving the May 30th, say aye. Aye. Raise your hand. Anybody who does not approve the May 30th minutes? Any abstentions? All right, they're approved. June minutes. Go back to the June, what was the date again? Why can't I? June 29th. June 29th, thank you. We'll I have a motion to approve the June 29th minutes. I move that we approve the June 29th minutes of 2023. Second. I'll do a second. Okay, discussion. Any changes? Discussion? Yes, I would like to go on page four, where it talked about three vacancies instead of there's five vacancies. And why do we keep saying three when well, there's five apartments available? So yeah, as of June 29th, how many vacancies? That was the exact, as reported, that was a vacancy. Yeah. No, there's been five. Uh, so yeah. why do you want to see if there may be one? It doesn't mean that the, that the housing authority has yeah. possession of that payment. So why you see it in empty, empty windows, it does not even be out of possession. So, it's a, it's a, um, so there may not be a tenant in there, but the tenant still has the keys to you. And it's still their property. It's not the housing authority's property. And they're still paying rent. So we're how can charging we... rents. We're not necessarily getting paid. Right. Right. So officially they're not. Yes. Yes. Any other changes? Yes, I'm, I'm confused about page four when they talk about eight thousand dollars pertains to legal action. Does that mean that eight thousand dollars is coming out of the budget this for is legal not action for that discussion? For we're approving the minutes right now, not discussing but, that. This is approval of the minutes. Well, that's what how can I approve if I don't understand what, what's well, being said? This is to approve the minutes. Were there errors in the minutes? Do you have any corrections to the well, minutes? The correction is trying to understand them. But you have a training program available to you to to understand these numbers. So this is just a so this is just a record of the meeting. It's they all got it is. No, but bring this under commissioner discussion. Please follow the appropriate agenda. We're not allowed to bring things up. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Answer that um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we talk. So it's, it's a, whether or not these minutes reflect the police special. Oh, we do with it. If there's okay. inaccuracies, mm -hmm. we're going yeah. to have to discuss those no, separately. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We did the scribe right. I know. I understand your frustration. The correct things. Yeah, yeah, she's just talking just happy. happy. You're not. I know. She's the right. Yes, we need to do that. All right. When it first, I, I just can't understand how a person can approve something if they don't understand it. If you, I mean, yes, can be wrong in the minutes of meeting. But what we're approving is whether this is an accurate record of the meeting. So inaccuracies have to be addressed separately, which we are welcome to do. But we don't do it. That just is. Do? So, you can help with it. Please help with that. Yeah. So uh, any other discussion? So keep a list of the inaccuracies. Yeah, yeah, challenges. Let's, 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 let's do that. Yeah, any other discussion? All right. Let's vote to approve the June 21st. I'm I know. And now we're asking you. Yeah. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 So you want to abstain or say no? Or? Well, what reason do you have for abstention? Because I came to the meeting on June 29th. Uh, you were present for the meeting. So it can't be a knowledge deficit about what happened during the meeting. You have a copy of the minutes. Were you either not uh, a knowledge deficit because I'm new and trying to understand something? If and it, instead of attacking a person and trying to take two minutes to explain something would be a much nicer way to deal to be dealing with this. We have to follow uh, meeting protocol. So Sue, were you present for the meeting? Did okay, you hear what was said? Does she Let have me. a reason for extension? I'm not asking for a reason. You can stay. Um, keep, please keep a list of the problems you have with the content of the minutes uh, if you feel they're inaccurate. Okay. I didn't say they're inaccurate. I'm just, I need an explanation. Okay. And remember your questions and bring them up. Okay. Yeah. Improving the minutes is just saying, yes, this is the conversation we had at the time. Okay. So. We're not brushing anything aside. Please keep a, a, a list of the questions you have. All right. Executive directors, uh, uh, pending financials, warrant reports. Something more is attached. Warrant warrant is attached. It's what it looks like. Yes, I know. Of recess. 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 No, they're. Um, there was nothing unusual for the warrant report uh, of 629. Any other questions about the mm -hmm. warrant reports? I believe Reese and I signed off yeah. at that time. Yeah. All right. Do we have to approve one or do we have to approve each? You do have to approve the oh. board report. That's okay. So motion to approve the warrant report. Yes. Uh, I make I meant that we approve the warrant report of June 29th, 2023, with a dollar amount of $7,995.31. 10 entries on the report. Do I have a second, please? I'll do a second. Take the motion or a second because I signed off. I don't think it'll well, All right, we have a motion and a second to approve more reports. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. No. I'm, I'm voting no in line with still not having my independent objective on it. I'm still voting no. Okay, so we have three yeah. in favor. Because I can't abstain, I was told, so I'm voting no. Okay. Uh, next, we have the treasurer's report. Uh, there's no vote required for the treasurer's report. You all have it. You should have read it by now. Uh, there's everything is in order. Um, and and we have our we have our fee account here to answer any questions you might have. This is a good chance to ask questions. Okay. Uh, you don't need a vote to accept. No. Quarterly report. So, Mr. Chairman, if I could ask if um, we could have Mr. Nobis. Is that the quarterly report? Yes, please. 
Garrett, we have Gary DePace with us, our fee accountant. Uh, Can I ask a question before you move to Gary DePace? He's sure. taking our minutes today. Yeah, so I'm jotting down the notes, and then Pam, as always, does a transcription from the team. Thank you. So, um, anyways, kind of the quarterly report is kind of moving in also towards the next agenda item, which is operating budget revision that we need to do. Um, if you look at your monthly expenditure report, you're going to see some um, negatives on the right hand side, which is showing that uh, we're spending more than what's in the budget. Uh, they are some extraordinary items that uh, have come up from the time we did the original budget, um, primarily in the maintenance side. Um, both materials and supplies that purchased for apartment turnover had uh, a lot of tur turnover this year, and uh, as well as a boiler that needs to be replaced. Um, so when you look at the monthly report, you're gonna see, on the, now you're looking at the quarterly, uh, Harry, I just was wondering if you, we will move into that, but if you want to move from the, what was uh, attached to the treasurer's report, which was the monthly report. Yeah, that was right there. You mentioned yeah. four of Yes, I know. This we, we're kind of moving into that as you go. Oh, I want okay. you to reference that just for primarily reasons. Do we see this on a monthly basis? Kind of a summary sheet is down below. And when you see down below, um, the budget is ANUEL, which stands for annual non-utility expense level. The prorated ANUEL means how many months you're into the budget year. Uh, it's prorated. So in this case, a prorated ANUEL was 192.973, and our actual expenditure is 217.717. So when you see a negative number, it means that we need to do something. Uh, we either need to find other revenue sources, we need to start cutting spending, or we need to do a budget revision, which is kind of where it ties into. And so from that, and you can see that the materials, materials and supplies and contract costs are the items that we are spending more than what we had in the budget. So when you look at the quarterly report, which is the quarterly form, this is what goes to DHCD. So it's also an outside uh, reporting to them. Um, on the bottom line on that, you'll see that our budget, we had estimated to be $14,590 coming from reserves. That would be page one of the operating statement. If you're looking at the revision for the Yes, that one right there. That's the, that's the one we're looking at right now, which is the quarterly operating data. And again, if you look at the bottom, the original budget estimated to have a negative $14,590. That was monies that we were going to be taken out of operating reserves. Um, the actual expenditure to date, we're at 31393 negative. Again, those are items that when we look at, and I as the accountant or you as board members would say, gee, what, you know, what's caused that? Well, that's where we have explanations to what caused that. Uh, primarily, it's been the turnover uh, of units. And what do we do about it? We do a budget revision, and which is going to be the next step that we'll talk about in terms of is a budget revision. So um, I guess if you have any specific questions on the quarterly, we may want to just, you know, at this point, get a motion to accept the quarterly report because that is something that needs to be uh, adopted. I move that we accept the quarterly uh, operating statement. Of, let's see, for fiscal year 930 2023. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. second. We need a second and a decision. Yeah. When do we bring up the fact that if, it, if the state says you have a 21 days to turn over an apartment and they sit and sit and sit, like last summer there were seven apartments available, and you're losing income for the housing authority, where does this fit into any of these reports? Okay. Basically, when you say losing money, because you're not all, getting any money because no one's living there. Okay. 
First of all, understand the budget that as long as there is a reason for extended vacancy and Pamela as executive director submits those to DHCD, that we are not penalized at all of the loss of revenue because the formula when we do it year end is as long as there's no penalty, when we do a calculation of actual subsidy earned, then the revenue loss is not lost. It's funded by the state. So when a month, when an apartment sits unoccupied and no one's paying rent, the state makes up for that money. Yes. So you're never as long paying. as as long as we have a waiver, okay, the, and the waiver requests go in by the executive director whenever it is. So there's reasons, obviously, that the HCD approves. So at year end, there is a vacancy loss if there is a loss. But I think Pamela worked very diligently to make sure that we are requesting waivers for extended vacancies. But who looks at these waivers to see that they're being Boston? Boston. Okay, and everything they, goes they to approve, Boston. They approve or deny. They approve or deny. It. And I don't. And we had a problem, Pamela. Yeah. Not right. All, 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 all our vacancy waivers have been approved, which means there is no loss to the Happy Housing Authority of Revenue. Yes, President so the first line of the quarterly operating statement um the shelter rent tenants yep the 232 was approved and right now we're at 157 that's, that's correct done for the same period of time right yep so that looks like a well basically it's a nine month so these are this is the nine month what you want to do is look at that column it's called pum per unit month yeah and that shows that yes, we originally budgeted at 371. Uh, our actual pump is 336. So yes, there is a loss of revenue. But when we do a budget revision, that we lower the revenue that we expect, the subsidy goes up. And you'll see that as I do the budget revision. Again, that's how we get funded for vacancy loss. The only time we would end up having to pay for vacancy loss is if there's no waiver. Okay. Okay. So the budget amount was two thirty-two. We brought in one fifty, almost one fifty-eight. That looks like a large variance, just to we need. Yes. And if you look, yeah. when we do a budget, when we do the budget revision, which is the next thing, mm -hmm. I'm budgeting to change that to two fifteen, because obviously they're lower. Okay. And again, when I explain the budget process, the loss of revenue is given to us through the state formula. Okay, so that's that's what happens. The same reason we end up getting funded by our, if we have a tenant that let's say is paying $700 a month, they leave and we take somebody in who pays $50 a month. Okay. There's no incentive to the authority to say, we're gonna wait and get somebody who can pay more because the state pays the difference, okay? Is that is that all? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, I I appreciate that very clear explanation because I myself have wondered: do, do housing authorities discriminate against people with very low income? And now I understand that no, there's they no don't. incentive. There's no incentive for housing, housing authority, authority to discriminate against a low exactly. income person. Okay, that's wonderful. That is exactly the way the formula works. And the other side of that coin, we talk about um, rental, the income, the utilities. You know, I talk about a, with the annual non-utility expense level because the state subsidizes us for all utilities. So with utilities, we're not gonna tell our tenants to turn down the heat to save an oil because the oil cost is part of our subsidy request. So that's the other side of the coin also. If the state subsidized the utilities, then why is it the utility money has been used and taken out of laundry money? We've been told at meetings where the utility- No, 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 no. That's the formula, the formula of, when say the laundry fund, that's a whole separate issue. And the reason for that is, is we split the revenue of the laundry because, number one, we own the washers and dryers. That's why we're able to have a washer and dryer fund. 
If we turned around and said, we're just going to have an outside contractor like laundromat or whatever come in, we wouldn't get any of that revenue because it goes all into account. Again, we have different accounts on there for revenue. Account 3690, I know that's something that 3690 is a subsidy related revenue, mm -hmm. which means that's going to offset our, our, our subsidy that we would earn. That's where half of the laundry money goes. If we didn't own that, so if we didn't own our washers and dryers, all of it goes to that. And it's there to pay for the utility cost because the state is also paying the utility cost water, sewer, electricity. Okay? So understand that originally, if we didn't own our own washers and dryers and have a washer and dryer fund, we would be getting nothing from the laundry. Okay? So if I look at the totals of um, the total revenues and compare the uh, approved budget to the actual today, there's like a, what, $80,000 spread approximately? And how do we um, how do we made up for that? I'm looking at quarterly operating. Okay, you know what the revenue was supposed to be around three seventy four. Well, again, yeah, three seventy four is the annual budget. That's mm -hmm. that's twelve months. Twelve. Months. We are at nine months. So the two ninety one is for nine months. Right. Uh, okay. So that's that's why you. That's why I kind of pointed out, Dave, looking at the first sheet that I gave her, the one you get monthly, where it's showing a negative number. That's, I, I guess if I were to say, if, you, if I close the books as of June 30th, we would be taking 27,000 thousand out of our reserves. Okay, if obviously at any month, if you see a positive number and set up, I close the books on that day, that's what's going to increase the reserve. Reserve is an ongoing number every month, either up or down. Right. Okay. So is there anything on the quarterly operating statement that concerns you? Well, the only thing that concerned me was the difference in the variance of the bottom line, and that's why we do one more step, and that is we do a budget revision, which is what we'll be asking you to vote on next. Okay? Um, so I think from that, so just understand, these are the numbers. Uh, this is where we stand, and um, so there's no unusual expense. You do a lot of housing authorities. Yes. So compared to your other clients, um, our numbers look reasonable. They they do, and, and as we tie this into a budget revision, we mean we're nine months into our fiscal year. Uh, we want to revise our budget to reflect more of an actual in going forward. And that's what we'll be doing. But shall we look at the um, budget changes, parents? Well, why don't you vote on the operating statements first? Oh, sorry, that should sure. require a vote. So we're to order the operating statement vote. Would you think we are in here first and second, and then in your discussion? So we, did you hear that, Dave? Mm -hmm. We already have a first and a second, and now we're ready to to vote since we've already had discussion. Unless unless Gary has. Um, any observations or concerns? I'm going to jump. So I have no questions. But you have no questions about no, this, no question. but you're voting no? Correct. No, no for me too. Okay. So I'll ask for a vote, right? And no other questions? All in favor of accepting the quarterly operating statement for the first months nine, nine months of, of our fiscal year yeah all in favor aye aye, aye. Uh, against no no fetch three to two fair all right what's what should we do next i think the budget revision is on the on the next one now that you should have a, a budget revision package, it says page is one of eight up on the right hand corner. It's three columns. Is it the, yeah. Yes. It says, it says in the operating budget. 
say revision number one up in the right hand corner. Um, so as you've asked these questions, I want you to again flip to or turn to page three of eight, which is um, the calculation of our operating subsidy. This is appendix B. It says appendix B. Yes, okay. page three of eight. Okay. This this form is very important for not only budgeting but also for our year end because um, when we do our year end statement, this form actually gets filled out in columns three and four get filled out versus the budget, which is book budget uh, page on number one column one. Um, you heard me talk about the annual annual non-utility expense level. Uh, line number three shows that we have $259,307 as our ANUEL. That's, that's kind of like the, our piece of the pie that we uh, spend when it comes to all the line items other than utilities. Um, line number five is utilities. Again, that's a budgeted utility amount of 115610 And we also have a revenue account, which is line one, which is our estimated revenues that we're going to draw in from the particular lines in the front. You'll see through the calculation that we ultimately come up with a total subsidy request, line number 12, 158,115. Now again, budgeted, that's our budgeted subsidy. When we do a year end, when we do the year end report, what gets substituted for revenue is going to be actual revenue. Again, that's where we take into consideration actual revenue charge. And we also take line number five, which will become actual utilities. What will stay constant in the final calculation is line number three, the allowable, allowable ANUEL, and line number eight, which would be DACD approved exemptions. Um, we get an exemption for legal of $3,500. Um, and we usually get that only if we use it. And this year we have used it. So again, that's at year end. So the requested subsidy is 158,115. And you'll see on page number one, that's what gets budgeted up under our revenue stream for line number eight, or yeah, line number yeah. nine. On ours, it says 158,117. Yes. That's, did I did I say? You that? said 115. I'm sorry, 117. Okay. No, it's only two bucks. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's 117. Yes, yes, correct. Um, so then once we know what our subsidy request is, I then go in and I put in the line items where we are spending. And obviously, the line items that I've had to increase uh, in the revision are reflected in, if you look on columns one and two, those are the pumps per unit month. And you'll see the changes that I made from the current approved budget to the LHA request. And you'll see the revenue side, yes, I'm requesting less. Um, but what happens is requesting less under the rental income, the subsidy goes up, which is why our subsidy went from a uh, pump of 223 to 253. Did you hold up what page you're looking at right now? The very first page. Okay. Okay. Yep. David, line, lines, if you look at columns, the column one, yep. that's the current approved pump. Right. And line two is the request. So when you see a change, that's what we're voting on in the budget revision. We're voting on the changes. Um, and obviously, some of the changes that we, we see increasing is uh, the interest on our investments went up. Well, that's something we do have money in Mass Municipal Depository Trust. Uh, that interest rate is starting to pay more. Obviously, that increased our interest income. But as we go down, the items that we changed, I did change legal. Again, legal is much higher than what we originally budgeted. Um, what line is legal here? Legal is line number 16. Thank you. Um, Line number uh, 22 is increased. I think substantially a portion of that is due with postage. I think we've done a lot more in postage than we had anticipated. And again, anticipated, we did this budget nine months ago. So it's like 
yet it, it, not sure at that point. Um, and then obviously materials supplies, line 33, maintenance, and line 34, contract costs. Actually, contract costs stayed the same. It's basically materials and supplies that increased. And again, those were items primarily into uh, staff apartment turnover. So materials and supplies. Because everything is more expensive now. It's well, it's more expensive, plus we had more. We have more, more to do. Yeah. Too. We had there were much more uh, vacancies that we turning over. And the other item, if you look down below on line number 4610, extraordinary maintenance. Those, we have two line items in extraordinary maintenance. One is apartment turnover, which we had originally budgeted 15. I'm increasing to 25 because we've at least spent 25 in apartment turnover. And we also had a boiler we had to replace. That was not even thought of, and that that was like nine hundred nine thousand. Do we have more boilers that are fixing to go to be replaced? Just one, just one more. We have another one coming up. Yeah. Should I be increasing another, putting another boiler in there? Potentially. When when will that be done? It's the only time we'll be doing it. As it's safe to say, when the meeting is when it goes. Okay, when it goes. It's so a, it's, um, we might be able to go two months. It's months it's for, it'll be next year's budget. Okay. I'll okay. be a boy. Excuse me. Yeah. Could you explain line 16 legal? What does that encompass? That encompasses anything we had to pay for our legal counsel. Um, sheriff's legal to the sheriff. Legal under the, the sheriff's, it, the collection costs. Sheriff fees and that is forty one ninety. That's in our okay. forty one ninety account. It's just payments to legal. You mean the the lawyers that represent that are part of DHCD? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I thought that they. I didn't know that they had to get paid off a DHCD. No, we pay, we we pay. We get an exemption up to thirty five hundred for that. Okay, but if we're budgeting eight thousand and we've spent eight thousand, then um, and how close forty five hundred has coming out of our our budget. So it's eight thousand just for Hadley. Just for right. that. Well, how close do we get to that eight thousand mark in a place like Hadley Housing Authority? We, well, in this case, we are. You look at our expenditures. Okay, and I think right now our legal spent today is sixty one hundred. So we're kind of right on target with legal one. Well. We, yeah, I mean, the less legal we have, the better. Fees, the better. I mean, it yeah. means we're, anything, we, anything you do from your AMUEL is taking away from resources that yeah. can be used somewhere else. It's, it's, it's your priority. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, in account 4171, line, yes. what's getting that? That was your. Uh, agreed upon procedure that was, I think, we had Lisa Fallon issued a report. Um, that's the agreed upon procedures. And that's forty five hundred dollars. Yep. And those fees are set by the HCD. Um, so the next step, when you talk about operating reserve, um, because if you flip on to page number, I'm going to just go to page six, which shows. The extraordinary items, those are expenditures that come out of operating reserve directly. There's only two items there. One is the apartment rehab, and it was as needed, and we needed it this past year. We've spent at least $25,000, uh, and the boiler replacement, so that $9,622. So $34,622 is coming directly out of our operating reserves. And then the next page, will give you the breakdown of our operating reserve. That's page seven, um, the seven of eight on the top. Now there's a calculation that DHCD does, which is the maximum operating reserve. Um, for Hadley, the maximum reserve is $217,035. The minimum reserve uh, used to be 20% or 43,407. Uh, DHCD has a recommended in to 35% is where they really want you to, to not to be below. 
Um, and then you get into our actual operating reserve. Our operating reserve at the end of the previous fiscal year was $167,547. That was as of the beginning of this fiscal year. And then you get down to the two items that we are proposed out of the budget, and that is $15,680 to coming out of our reserves towards our a and EL, um, plus the net deficit of 38122 which are the items that we talked about. Our reserve level is expected to be at 113745 as of the end of our fiscal year, which will be in two months. Just really quickly, yep. uh, at the beginning of this fiscal year, yep. so October 1st, of last, yep. we were at 167. Yes, but, and that's a, a, an op that's a reserve of what? About 77%, um, I think. Oh, th yeah, that's what I was in my head. Yeah. Um, so this past year, basically our budgeted, you know, what we're spending will get us down to 52%. Again, we're not below 35. Uh, 35 is not a good. I mean, we once you start going below 35 percent, you need special approval from DHCD for any expenditure. Okay. But everything that we've spent money on that knocked us from 77 down to 52 was all approved. Yeah. Yes. Have to have a, you have to have. Boy, you have to put a boy you have to have a renovated apartment yep. that's fit for habitation. That's what reserve is for. Yeah. Right. Okay. Got it. Yep. One more time here. I'm sorry. The 38122 that we're taking out of reserve. Yep. Was for what? It's those primarily the two items uh, that the were the boiler replacement and apartment turnover. Again, if if we had no apartments turning over, we'd be in good shape. Except for boilers. Well, and the boiler, yeah. yeah. And it, you have to understand, too, that um, any outside funding for boilers is no longer allowed if it's an oil board, oil uh, or gas that's by the state's um, energy policy. But... So just quickly, Pamela, you've already explained to us multiple times, but for everyone in the room, uh, the reason is, is because the Executive Office of Housing and Livable, Livable Communities wants everybody to go to, say, mini splits and heat pumps, but the expense of those is cost per unit. Correct. And correct. the bill give us the funding. Um, and I still believe they're giving us 100% funding, but it's a, it does flow through our capital funds. So it can take that money from another, another earmarked project, um, but the cost to the residents for, um, and again, the, so the boilers that went were in the 705, so it's a three bedroom unit to heat or cool a three bedroom unit electrically is very expensive. So it's very cost prohibitive. It's about 7,000 bucks, isn't it, per? Well, we did uh, in Belchertown, we did a fourplex of two bedroom units, um, and the heat pumps cost over $110,000, and the tenants electric bills were going up over five, six, seven hundred dollars. So, month. this is for seven of five. These were seven. Yes, uh, at Goldenport, all of the boilers have already been fixed. Right. These, I think it was a mod project it that was. we did like eight mm -hmm. years ago, eight or nine. And it's been kind of rolling through. Right. Yeah. So the state makes no allotment. Sorry, uh, the state makes no allotment for the increased electrical bills. They didn't. But so what the Belcher Town Housing ended up doing was to absorb those costs uh, for the tenants of those 705 units. And that we're allowed to change the structure of um, 705s typically pay 27% of their income because they pay utilities. These folks now pay 30%. Because it falls under that, that cap. Because the utility, the, the electric bill was so astonishingly expensive, they couldn't, the tenants couldn't pay. So that was a very wonderful thing that Belcher Town Housing Authority Board of Commissioners funded for, for the 705 units. Really helped them. So that's kind of my explanation of the budget revision. Um, with the changes, I guess if we have any other questions, I think that's something we want to call the, for. Uh, salaries and wages page is blank. Right, because we have no salaries and wages. So do we contribute to the salaries and wages? Through the management expense. agreement. Your it's, management agreement is funded through for account 4190 and 4430. 
you're contracting out all your maintenance to Amherst Housing, right. and you, your management fee uh, is paid to them through our 4190 account. If you went back to doing your own and employing somebody, then we would have a 4110 and a 4410. And then would also be increasing would be the employee benefits because we would have to be providing benefits to um, the employees. So what I'm wondering about, so I'm wondering about if we, if we might renegotiate the management agreement with Amherst. I imagine salaries and wages are a place that they may ask for more money or maybe. As so it's the form, the form, it's a formula based. The HCD says this is what the management fee is based upon a calculation for the units, of, of units, of number of units, yeah. and and a formula that they issue out. Okay. Um, so I mean that's there's no negotiation when it comes right. Right. Excuse me. Did you say management fee is forty one ninety and forty four thirty? Is that what you? No. Those are two components of what when Amherst Housing bills and you you pay a bill. There's two major components. Actually, there could be supplies in there too. Although I have asked Pamela to try to make sure we isolate as much as we can materials and supplies. They should have. We should have our own Home Depot. Badly Housing should have. You know, when something needs to go and be bought at Home Depot, don't make it go through Amherst and then build to here. It should just go directly to Adams. So you're paying Home Depot for materials and supplies. Uh, the major th main thing that we build, contract cost, is contract maintenance. So when we're dispatching, or when Amherst is dispatching a maintenance man here to work, those next number of hours are being billed as a contract, just like you would if you called the upside plumb. Um, and the same thing with the management fee. The management fee is the fee calculated based upon a formula that the HCD has. One twelfth of that is what's being billed, and that's in account forty one ninety. So our management fee is roughly the home to the exact number, about thirty five thousand dollars. Sorry, it's. Yes, line item to page eight of eight. The management fee was actually forty six thousand six hundred. Sorry, where where is that? Page eight under forty one ninety. You'll see there's certain things that are there and the management fee is is there. I saw something somewhere along the line that was calculated at thirty three or thirty five thousand. So am I looking at the wrong number or, or is some that's that's something in the original budget? My point is when we had our own executive director here, we weren't paying for the additional uh, oversight that I know executive directors get because they take on more units of responsibility. Yeah, and our executive director, when she was here, was not a benefited position, it was part-time. Now it's a full-time job with benefits. So I'm confused on who's paying for that and where the incentive is. The executive director, um, at the time, she had health insurance, so there was a benefit. Okay. Um, and she was part of the retirement system. So we were paying. But there were no benefits if it was a position less than 20 hours. She was grandfathered in. Okay. Okay, I'm just saying. She, she was, go, go to Hampshire County retirement. She was grandfathered in. Okay. Uh, because she came from South Hadley. Okay. Okay. I sit on that board, so it's really okay. Good. Okay, but does that make sense? The grandfathering in? Uh, yes, I understand the grandfathering clause. Um, so the form is the additional money coming to pay the executive director for taking on fifty-two more units of him, because that was an increase in salary. Where does that money come from? Hearing yeah, come. From, I'd like to hear. Okay, no. Where does that money come from? Is what it money from the Hadley budget? When an executive director takes on another okay. health authority, yep. we have 52 units, is an increase in salary, right, right to the DHCD to compensate. 
So where does that money from? come from? The Hadley Argent budget? Partly from the Hadley budget. Yes. And where is that reported here in 4190? It's part of the 4190. Here you That's all I need. Okay. I have a further clarification. So it's the management agreement allows 100% of an ED salary times, what is it, 1.5%? Times times one point two five. So that one point two five five percent is represented of, of of benefits. Right, and then out of that formula comes, and, and you folks approved it the last time that we had the management yeah. is roughly ten thousand dollars for the executive director that comes from that. That's correct. That Amherst pays right. it. $10, but that's not Amherst. That's why I didn't want to get it. That's Amherst budget, exactly. not not having budget. But having pays one point. Two five percent on the Right. And that's this one right here. So, so what is the incentive for Amherst to be overseeing him? What's the incentive? The incentive there, there at this point is there is resources available for staff and the director and a cooperation agreement. All this is coming as a cooperation agreement. And again, I'm going to go back to if you stood alone as, you know, back to the days of you guys hire an executive director, you guys hire a maintenance man, the issues that go along with that is much more costly. And I've witnessed it and seen it. That's the only way that our reserves were able to increase over a period of time versus drawing us out because we were... There were times I would come to this board this is 10, 15 years ago and say, our reserves are down to the minimum, 20%. You know, what can we do? How can we save money? Because we weren't getting it. Now, at the time, and again, the board, a board of directors of the Hadley Housing Authority wanted, we, number one, we were supposed to only have 30 hours of maintenance. Okay. We increased it, they increased it to 40. Okay. For one thing only, and I remember at the time, if the HCD would approve a truck and get an exemption for a truck, which we did, then the maintenance man then could go to 40 hours as long as we could re reduce the amount of snow removal costs and sanding costs. That happened for a couple of years. Okay. I, can't, I'm not, I wasn't the one here making management decisions of when we... But don't you think if this was true, more housing authorities would combine together? This is unusual, even though they say at these uh, meetings that it's happening He's more. tempted, he's tempted. Yeah, that's, only Just because, so, that's only because they fired the executive director. She only she, no, she, she did not, not she did well, not get fired. That. No, she did not. it did not. Do not, do not, you cannot put words in people's mouths, no. especially well, when you're being television. Parents got together and they got it said in the paper and they got rid of her, but now they're using her in another capacity in order to answer your question, Sue. So the question is, I think, if there was a benefit to it, I think more housing authorities would do it. And I think you have to be aware, you have to be aware that we only have maintenance one day a week, Thursdays. Yeah, no, that no, is just not true. Oh, that's the only thing we have to make here. It's not. True. I live here. I know. And, I run it. and number two, we, our 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 office is now only manned Mondays and Fridays, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday by so much. The the sign is right up there, and it happens. And half the time I come up here Friday, there's nobody here. No. So you're saying you're talking about the benefits are that we're not getting the benefits that you're saying that we're supposed to be getting. And there's people who live here that can so ver verify that. May I, may I, may I, may I, may I, Sue, I live here too. And this office is staff a minimum of 60 to 20 hours. So, so. <laughs> and in fact, the window might not be open, but they're doing their back office duties. If you have a problem, call. I do. And I know when someone's here. here and there's no car here. Please, please, please. please. I'll show you the, the hours on the on the door right here. Okay. Anyway, so, so we're saying if we were to go by ourselves, what would happen? I, I think the cost would be uh would skyrocket to the portion of you may have a balanced budget, but it's, it's you're gonna just draw from reserves, draw from reserves. And I don't think you would have the controls that you would have. 
Um, there are controls going on now um, by additional staff that you don't have when you have just an executive director, which I, 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 I could go into stories of small authorities of lost of um, things, but. These are the answers. Would you like to look at them? Posted. So, mm -hmm. so, so was that Hadley Housing the Authority not purchased Hadley years and years and years ago? I I cannot say. I'm not going to talk about no, Brian. No, I'm, I'm just saying because you're talking about this has been a benefit to Hadley to go be yoked with them. It's been a benefit to Hadley. Yeah, so you're saying that in prior yes. years, it was, Hadley was not functioning. If our them. reserve levels were at the level they were, we're, we were running on yeah. a shoestring. Yeah. No, you're only looking financially. What I'm saying, you're saying reserves, reserves. There's more to a housing authority than just reserves. Okay. You need reserves to run it, but there's a hell of a lot more than the way people are treated. So I'm yeah. saying that when you call for a maintenance request, there is nobody to answer the Unless phone. it's an emergency. Really? If it's an emergency, okay. yes. Well, what would be different if you had a director who's working 16 hours a week? Because, That's all I'm But I don't see personally being here 20 years any benefits and 12 future people being here a long time. The benefits of all the people that are staffed by Amherst, anytime we ever go up to them and say, you know, property manager, we ask a question. A modernization, we ask a question. All they do is say, ask Pamela. So we don't, we can't get anywhere. We have to go to sure. Amherst Housing. It's not here for us. Right, so that's we have to go to Amherst. Well, that's something we have to work out with them. So he has to know the truth. <laughs> what's what's happening? It's your opinion. Because no, it's no, it's not. Oh, no, no, that's not true. Please, please. So, okay. Um, so, so anyways, I think a task right now is the budget meeting that um, I think you should be voting on or ask any questions. One, one other question. Uh, on my uh, desire to have an independent objective line, where would that be funded from or how could that be? It would it would end up it would end up becoming an expense in audit cost, which would increase the deficit on the bottom line, which would decrease our reserve sure. even more. Thank you. Again, why is reserve? I just asked where it was coming from. Yeah, I know that. And he answered it. Yes. California reserve. That's the answer. And the reserve currently is one hundred and thirteen. Yeah, it's fifty-two percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any I, suggestion? Sorry, Reese. Yeah, I, I do think since Harry brought up uh, an independent audit, we have in place a state au auditor, you know, who's appointed by the governor, whatever Susan Blunt, right? Right. So if there was, for instance, if Harry, as a board of commissioner, has a very strong concern that there's any financial malfeasance going on, then would the appropriate thing for him to do would be contact the state auditor. I mean, he used to work for the state auditor uh, and say, I have these concerns and tell the state auditor his concerns. And then the state auditor could come in or work through the inspector general's office rather than having the tenants be in a way undermined by, by not having enough reserves, if an independent audit that a board, our board could vote on, would would cost sixteen thousand dollars or whatever for a four year audit, um, that's going to come out of our reserves, and that could mean that we don't get our do our new doors. That could mean we don't get the parking lot. That's It could be. Uh, no, I'd like to respond. Before, I'd like to respond to that real quickly. I have not made any accusations, allegations of any malfeasance at all. Oh, okay. All I have said is that the last four years that our finances have been controlled and up and, and bills being paid and our budget, just for the sake of math, of $400,000 a year from mm -hmm. tenant rents mm -hmm. and DHE subsidies, that's $1.6 million over four years. Mm -hmm. And I just would like to understand where all that money is gone 
Mm -hmm. And that's the reason for an independent, objective audit, not the fee accountant that audits his own work. He doesn't audit his own work. Linda Fallon audits. Linda Fallon does an agreed upon procedures audit. When I spoke to her, she didn't mention anything to me about the finances that she had extended. Am I wrong to that? First of all, let's go back to the history of the AUP. Yes, years ago, the state auditors used to come in and sit and they could spend six months here counting paper clips. The, I mean, that was an audit. There was things that would be found, wouldn't be found. Uh, I go back to where state auditors came in in the next week. I under my underfound uh, a lot of stolen money. I'm not going to get into the, the issues, but that's what. So audits don't do everything. I at understand. The time, at the time, Susan Bump was our state auditor, right. and there was changes on the federal level coming under the Yellow Book audit, um, and they just determined that they must have independent audits from federal governments who have funds coming in only at a certain threshold, and a threshold was $750,000 of federal resources in which they would have to have an independent audit. And that still exists. Right. Um, the state auditors were at the time were reviewed by HUD and were determined not to qualify, be able to issue qualified opinions. So the state auditors said, we're getting out of housing authority business. DHCD, or actually the state, turned around when they passed chapter 13. 335 of the housing, last housing reform, came up and said that every author housing authority must have an audit. But the cost of a full audit would be substantial. Okay, So they came up with agreed upon procedures. And those agreed upon procedures were DACD directed to look at what they consider the major and the components of operating a housing authority. So you as a housing board have tools at your beck end to already tell you whether or not a housing authority is operating properly. The first is the AUP. You get a report of that agreed upon procedure. If there are, it, it lists exactly what those items that they look at are. And if there are exceptions, if there are exceptions, then they must be addressed. Okay, so I, I don't have even seen the last report that you had. There probably, were there items? There were exceptions under the chain. They under the chain, okay. So that means that's the tool that you as board members have to determine what, it's only one tool. The second tool is the, the, peer, the performance management review. That is the, another review that's done by DHCD in which they come and review all the procedures that are going on and, and the following of the state regulations that also either are going to have exceptions or not exceptions. And I don't know what that report was, the last one, but obviously one of the report, part of that PMR, looks at operating reserves. And if your operating reserves are below a certain percent, it's a finding, okay? How do you address those findings? That's what we're trying to keep you to keep you right on, so that you do get good PMR reports, you do get good AUP reports. From that, that's when you might say, well, if you got an AUP report that showed twenty-five exceptions out of the out of the fifty things that are looked at, it there are twenty-five exceptions. Or the PMR that's coming from DHCD with bad reports. That's when you call for an independent audit and might call the Attorney General because there's something else wrong. DHCD probably would also. So that's. If you found something. If I found something, I'm going to let you know. That's, because you, were, you basically work for DHCD. You don't, you know. I work for the Hadley Housing Authority. I'm looking out for the interest of the Hadley Housing Authority. Right. Right. And it's, it's again, efficiency is what they expect. And 
Efficiency turns into savings, which brings reserves. That's that's why I always go to look at that. The finances of the authority shows the backbone of the authority. Mr. DePace, I want to ask you something. If you found something doing your your work as our fee accountant, and you found anything questionable, you would report it, would you of not? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Mr. Chair, can I just ask that Please. So when the AUP is done, warrant reports are looked at for every single month and compared to the minutes of every meeting to make sure that the board has reviewed all the expenditures. And then there, there are other financials. They look at tenant audit, tenant ledgers. Yes, well, yeah. big tenant and ledgers. Again, there is a financial procedure. Point. It's very specific. Mm -hmm. When they come in, they must look at, um, I believe in this size authority, I think it's four tenant files. Now, if the calculations of rent determination is being done wrong, that's going to come out in an exception. And again, that's why it's so important that you understand that, and everything is driven by regulation. Exactly. So tenant calculation rental, there's occupancy, everything. All right. When you mention the fact they look at procedure, what is included in procedure? The procedures are spe specific. Are you and talking about financial procedures only? There's many procedures, no. There's, tenant, there's a review of the tenant files, there's a review of internal controls. Um, and, and again, if you wanted to, the procedures are all spelled out in a public housing notice. Everything driven by DHCD is a public housing notice. If you want to get those, you, you obviously have the ability to go online. They're all published online, and it will spell exactly what the auditors are looking at. Yeah. So why is it they have, I just have one more question. Sure. Why is it that they don't talk to board members as part of the procedure or talk to tenants? Why is it that they're left out of That's the, not part of an audit procedure. The, the, the PMR, my understanding of the PMR, is, isn't is part of that tenant response. Doesn't it, didn't they have questionnaires go out? They mm -hmm. run That's right. part of the PMR. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. All right, the simplest, uh, simplest form possible, please. The only fees that we're paying Amherst is the management fee of forty six six hundred and administrative support right of sixteen thousand six eighty five. Those are the only two fees that are broken down into the twelve month in the forty one ninety. And if you look down below, is a talks about the contract cost. Okay, that's that's would be that would be the maintenance side of it. In any other plan, right? Or any right. What's the formula? Yeah, there you go. And then see. So the 77, sorry. So are we in reality indebted to Amherst and the Board of Commissioners for saving us, like taking us on, and that's their incentive. They were helping us, they looked at, 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 the us. at the time, Harry, there was nobody wanting to take the job. Right. So I'm and, fully aware that the Department of Revenue got away from doing municipal audits. Everyone had to not get independent on this. Right. I sit on the pension board for another five months. My term is going to end, and I'm not going to continue. I am retired. I want to be on the fire time. And a uh, number of retirement systems get audited by my former agency where I work, the Public Retirement Commission. Iraq. Iraq. And a number of retirement systems statewide also conduct individual independent financial audits. They have to. And we have used in the past some of their work. So we're not duplicating efforts, but primarily we're looking at membership calculation when you came into service, all of that stuff. So in your opinion, you don't believe that we need an audit, number one. Number two, when it came up back in April, you weren't on the agenda. You showed up, and there was a cry or a plea that came from our, our tenant rep that she said, so you don't think we should have an audit, we need an audit, $16,000 or not, that would come out of reserve, wherever. Just 
why don't you feel or believe that we need an independent, objective look at $1.6 million over the last four years that has been at least operational for tenant rents and for DHC subsidies? Because I don't, my opinion, that's why I'm, I think we have sufficient internal controls that will turn around and say, there's been no expenditures that are, that was not required. Okay. I, I, I mean, again, do we want to count paper clips? No, I'm, I'm not there. You know, I'm, I know that. I'm not. There. That's, and that's all I can say is. It, it just seems to me that when you give up control, paying your bills, and, and, and you've yoked with an administration that's handling everything for you, okay, and they come and give us things, reports, and whatever, um, it just seems to me that there should be another oversight other than you as a fee account. That's, that's, the only that's thing all I say is what I'm saying, because we have it okay. in other Governmental bodies and things. And, and I know the state auditor doesn't do the DHCP housing. At certain levels, yeah. that's a requirement. I think you've got to look at the controls that you have in place. There's not a bill that has been paid in the last four years that has not gone before a board for approval or a signature. That's a control in itself. Right. And, and I would have appreciated when. We were going to meet with you. Dave and I wanted to meet with you just for this specific purpose of understanding this and the audit. And that meeting did not happen because you called the administration and then we couldn't have that meeting. So, no, and no so that's, that's, not, that's not true. That's okay. not true. Well, they never went to me because that's what I understood it to be. You is that I was to meet with you and David. No. David said he could not meet. I said, I'll meet any other time with two of you. I will not meet individually because I did not want anything taken out of context. I didn't know you could meet. That was that meeting was set. Let, let me finish on it. I that got meeting the email. was set. When did you say you could not meet? I that have meeting? no idea. So okay. I have an email. Then I'll back that. down from there. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Just the fact that we went through something in a back meeting where checks were used from a woman who was on the board who left and they were still being used. To me, that should be reported to a or to somebody who was overseeing, because it was even though the fee person from Amber said it was a mistake and she apologized, the fact that it was being used, she left here. Her name was still on it, and it was being used by a housing authority. Is no? Is there nobody that looks at things like these other than the people that are on the board? That was a mistake, and was it found? Yeah, but why is it that there's never any repercussion for mistakes? What would you What would you like? Would you like? I, I don't. I don't. I want, I, mean, I want the same fairness that when a tenant makes a mistake, you get a notice to quit. You yeah. get yelled at. You get <laughs> when it sir, when sir, it sir, 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 so how does how do we know that didn't happen? Uh, because of, well, don't you how share? do you know that doesn't happen? Well, then you don't share it with the board. Yeah. You're no, not you're not privy to that. Because you are not privy here. to, as a board of commissioner and a tenant, you are not privy to, to private confidential information about staff. There is. You're not. But I was privy to know that it happened. So I'm free, I, you know. All right. This is operational stuff, ED wants to jump in. You're welcome to, otherwise, Gary's not. So there's an example of a mistake. But what I'm saying is, the, the, there's why I'm talking about that. An independent audit sometimes would be helpful because of the fact how many other mistakes that we that weren't told out loud at a, at a board meeting, and and it's just the woman says I made a mistake. You know, it's just who who oversees these mistakes and why is there a write up about it? So I can guarantee you that there is a mistake made on a weekly basis. I can guarantee you that because we're human beings and we make mistakes. And we find mistakes and we correct them. And we correct them with full transparency. So why so don't you have that same thing towards tenants? So you're making so you're in your sense you're supposed to be speaking as a commissioner, not as a tenant. The tenant thought what we do with the tenant follows Massachusetts law and it follows the contract, which is the lease that we have. So that's and the, that lease is a two-sided agreement. I have responsibilities 
as your landlord and you have responsibilities as our tenant. And that's what the housing authority enforces. And what kind of paperwork do you have to abide by? I can say is what I'm saying. I've got a whole slew of internal procedures and a personnel policy that I follow with what I need to do with my employees. And you are welcome to have a copy of the personnel policy. You're welcome to have a copy of our union contract when the union's ratified. That's ratified in the maintenance parts. But beyond that, you're not privy to the day-to-day -day operations of the housing authority or what happens with a tenant. I'm just okay, trying to point out uh, the unfairness. So we it's can bring that up as an agenda yeah. item in future, like. Uh, yeah. future, I think what we want to do today is we do need to move that budget revision because it is due by the end of this month. I make a motion to accept the revision because it is due at the end of the month. And uh, yeah, make that motion. We have a second. Yes, I second. Well, Richard, I both second. All right, with three seconds. Any other discussion on the revisions? There's nothing uh, you've already gone over, Gary. Thank you. I have trouble finding individual sheets with these uh, bundles, so I'm sorry. Here question. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. All right. Other revisions? You say we have the first, and I made the motion. We have the second. Yes, Asked now for the discussion. Vote. There's discussion. Any other discussion on the revisions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous agreement to the revision. So this is the official document that we need to sign in. So without the vote, I have to fill in who the first is. But yeah, all commissioners do need to sign this. Um, David, you're at the top and everyone else is below. So I can pass this along and you can sign it. And this, Gary just told me this is the current year's budget that yeah. goes for another two months. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. for the revision. That's just sign the book sign. We can sign it. Okay. Gary, yeah, it's very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, are you hanging out or you take it off? Uh, I was hoping to head off and do some work, but if, so if we have any other discussion you like to numbers for what um Amber receives from Hadley uh, the salaries but uh, maintenance whatever it's what's, what's on on the back of that page um of that budget revision under the management fee and other um contract costs now you have please understand that the reason there are three different line items that what Hadley gets for us management fee come from original. If they were just going to manage and you had to own the maintenance man, mm -hmm. then there wouldn't be any maintenance contract. Okay. The second would be if we wanted administrative, we used to have administrative support here, it's a part time position. That was also determined at the time that we couldn't hire anybody. So that's why we, the determination was to bill, have Amherst bill so that they could just get a person up here. But in the case of the, that might be a full time person at Amherst who works here temporarily. That's why the temporary assistant. And that's why the three, the three different line items in our budget. You also work for Amherst? Yes, I do. Are you going to be making any recommendations to them regarding Hadley and the budget? Uh, it's we totally up to them. Uh, there, I mean, you personally, you personally, my opinion is, I think the Hadley Housing Authority is better off having a management company versus having to hire their own executive director, having to hire their own maintenance staff, and you got to understand when you hire somebody, what goes with that is all the things the oh, on call, right. who calls at night. Who, I was asking about yeah. the average side. So I've heard it said, yeah. why would Amherst re up with that? Um, that's their discussion. That's their board. What if you're there's no, if there's you're no at, major incentive. The but Amherst budget could is large enough to reallocate its resources for the loss of resources. So you anticipate that they're going to be okay or you feel like there's no reason why they, they should would be, be okay? okay. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. 
it, so just to uh, condense it, they don't need us, but we need them. Well, that's we no, we just, so I, that's my opinion. I the financial it. and and the management <laughs> because I see the problems that small small housing authorities have, and every small housing authority that loses its director that might have now or a maintenance man. They're, they're, they can't find anybody. They can't what? get anybody to... to That's qualified. This That's place, qualified. This yeah. place functioned for 60, over 60 years. Exactly. It's only yeah. been four years that we've been under I started here with Stanley Paulson. Well, even before Stanley Paulson was the director. I've come a long way with this housing authority. I've seen all the problems that go along with it. Uh, Hadley is unique. Hadley has so many units spread out in such a large, vast area compared to a 40-unit elderly complex that is up and down in 20% of its space. I fought with DHCD for a long time to get resources over and above for Hadley. That's how we got the truck. That's how at the time, but it just... I'll just give an example. Years ago, when a maintenance man was hired, they were hired to be here all the time. And again, that workforce, we were there, but then all of a sudden the maintenance man said, wait a minute, I'm tired of getting a call at midnight. I'm tired of getting a call at such and such with no compensation. Now we call Locksman, they don't come. We pay a 65 to two. Well, all right, Gary, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank so I'm kind of hearing that we're the benefit, we're the beneficiary, and thank you. I believe so. Emerson says the donor, and there is some question as to whether or not they would want to uh, uh, be up or not. But that's not a question okay. for you. Hmm? I know. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you all for your time. All right, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right, fine. Next uh, item is management agreement. I'm going to make a motion to start okay. this. I'm sorry, we're, we're actually still at Harvey. But... Yeah, we just got to the financial. Unit yeah, vacancy and TAR. See where we are? Here. Okay, thank you. Where are we? Where are we? Can we We've been at this an hour and a half. Can we take like a bathroom break? Sure. Two minutes break here. Uh, what's the time? Say, say five. It'll we'll take longer to. Oh, thank you. 12 30 exactly. 12 30 p.m. We're taking a five minute break. Uh, the time is now 12 39. We are going to reconvene the meeting of July 25th, 2023. Uh, we're at item 3B property management reports. Uh, unit vacancy report that you have? Yeah. So, the unit vacancy is currently we have four units at Golden Court and one at Berkeley for a total of five. And we are vetting somebody for the Berk uh, Well, the Berkeley one is um, last month we actually had somebody move in to the other one. And that was one that actually took a good chunk of that, that budget revision, which is folks just approved. The, the bigger the, uh, the unit, higher the turnover cost. So we're, we have five total now. Between the two, or the between the two developments, and the uh, budget revision report uh, re recognizes the four empty units at Golden Court and the work that needs to be done to prepare them for new tenants. Yes, and we have applications. Oh, we do not have a shortage of applications. Okay, but it, they come from near and far, right? Yes, so it takes time. Them. Could you give us an idea of how many people are on the wait list, just so everybody knows what you're dealing with? In the well, last time I looked at the 667 list for Hadley, there were 3,400 people on the wait list. And what about 705s? 705s, it's 505. Right. So why does it take a long time to, to fill in? The <laughs> They're not all qualified. So they have, you have to be eligible and qualified. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole slew of regulations that you have to fix. So you're trying to find, you are having trouble finding qualified people. Well, the problem that's been um, for, with CHAM for the longest time is that it's we, we get a higher number of the priorities, which are 
typically from the eastern part of the state because of they fall under emergencies and there's more shelters out in the eastern part of the state. So they clog up the wait list. You have, we can pull down 100 people at a time, send out the applications, the supplemental applications. It takes, uh, they're getting 10 days to respond. Um, we have to go through a process and it's just and every time you might, you may knock somebody off and say, oh, you're not a priority. And then they can go right back in and reapply. So, so DHCD or the Department of, uh, I think we're saying HLC. Just, that's easier. They don't do the, any kind of preliminary screening to save the individual health gets orange. Great that you brought that up because there are changes. They have been changing uh, CHAMP for the last year. For the, every month there's a new improvement to the system to make it work better. So we also have um, what's called um, mobile vouchers. Through if They're similar to Section 8 um, in, the, in the, the Commonwealth. One of the types of mobile vouchers that now you can apply on CHAMP and starting this month, DHCB has outsourced to a third party contractor the priorities. They're going to be vetting people ahead of time. And the goal is that by September of this year, up to September, October, they'll be doing the 667 and 705 too, which should help the local housing authorities get through that list so that we can get to our local yeah, seniors and disabled and then at least from the Sounds amazingly yeah. Why is it before we joined with Amherst Housing Authority, our apartments were filled so much more quickly? We never had five or six, last summer, seven apartments. Because CHAMP. CHAMP has CHAMP is a new but I think of that the CHAMP is CHAMP is less than five years old. That's why. Amherst has been here for that amount of time. Before housing authorities, we had paper applications and they were better that way. It no. did, but it's regulatory. And we can't, unfortunately, we can't not use CHAMP, we're, we're obligated to use CHAMP. Good enough. Keep working on that. Uh, tenant account receivable report. So this is um this is this is showing our current tar is 23,243.68, which is outrageous. It's too high. So that's tenants that owe a rearage. Um Sue, I believe you had a question about uh, like in the minutes where it said that there was eight thousand dollars it was legal. What that meant was that at that time, back in May, $8,000 in unpaid rent was was causing a problem with the legal fees. So we're of that $23,000 to 23,443, $17,667, and a little bit more is overdue rent for the 667, not the 705. Two of those amounts um, are successful uh, legal cases that we were we were able to win in housing court to get those paid and working to get those units back online. So we are working the tenant um, the rent collection policy to get that that down. So that twenty seven thousand is over right now. Yeah. And by next month, what would you guess it'll be at? Oh, I wouldn't say much different because so the, the ones that we want in housing court will now need to go to collections and the Department of Revenue so that we can try to recapture that money. Yes. And then hope we're working with tenants to get onto repayment mm -hmm. units, which would be our first choice before any kind of legal um, proceeding is to get a tenant on a repayment agreement and spread it out over either five months or, or a month, or excuse me, a year, if they're on automatic payments. And that's a win-win for the tenant. They don't pay any late fees or any fees at all. And it's a win-win for uh, the housing authority too, because when we have to report these figures every month to the Department of Housing, we have, this is outstanding, and then this is in a, um, the, a column that's in the repayment agreements, that's forgiven debt. Not that it goes away, it's just that you're working your policy. Good, thank you. Uh, facilities reports, window project update. So first thing, the work orders. We just have the two work orders, orders and reports, yeah. It was just. Who's on vacation? He's not on vacation. No, just, yes, the staff isn't going to be coming in longer. It's taking up too much of their time for the three housing authorities. It's not typical that staff comes to board meetings. 
It's just that Amherst did it, so we're um, But these are the three outstanding work orders. And then this the next page just shows you again some of the, the different categories, emergency on call, uh, preventative maintenance, the request requests come in either through a tenant or from uh, or staff if they see something. And then it's so the letter is access port it worked in the uh that's in this room here probably it's in, it's in the at whole building too so you'll see um there's a, a board here and there's yeah. one in the hallway so that they'll be able to when they're in uh we do notice that you know a lot of folks when they're in doing their laundry will be on their on their uh cell phone i'll oh, check that out check that out when you're so uh it looks pretty good for the work orders and the window project the window project is getting ready to start. There is, um, we have a dumpster coming to help you folks that might have things that are, they need to get rid of that you can't put into the regular trash. There's no storage um, area. There is no storage area. Most most housing authorities do not have storage. Except even temporary for a window project? Uh, well, if there, if you could do, yeah, you could do temporary for a window project. Sure. But there's, in this instance, it wouldn't, you don't think it would be needed because there's just moving they just need to move away things from the from the window oh okay um the dumpsters coming to throw the dumpsters right. coming because as with many of us we collect things that um we probably should get rid of over the years so we're the housing authority has got a, a um a dumpster coming so that folks can just throw the items away that they just don't want anymore and um, the, so there was, if you remember, there was a picture with the windows when they did the um, the mock-up. So the mock-up came in and it just had the mullions in between the windows, which, thank goodness, they didn't order the windows. Um, so the windows are in order and should be coming in, and we're hoping to start in first, second week of August. Second week of August. Okay. Sure. But you're not talking about the things that people do want, like their barbecue grills and their tools that they use for their garden. Because the because the policy says two chairs and one table, so you're saying that anything else that people have been using for years for their gardens, for their barbecues, for just is going to be thrown in the dumpster. Because you're only saying half the store. You're talking about things that you don't that people want to you're throw. Away. Could be How about away. things that people don't want to throw away that are going to be thrown away for them at the tenant? Space? Then you need to move them if they're your things, if they're your tools. Then you need to move them so that the contractors. You know, I'm not talking about the ones in front of the window. I'm talking about above and beyond where you're coming at. Well, I'm talking about the. So, the, are you talking about the policy that the early housing was in effect? The two policies that was in effect in 2007, 2016. No, that 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 was 2007. I have the book right here when they were originally written. Right, and then they were revised, which were. So the only policies we had that were revised. That's not true, ma'am. It's not true that they're the only ones. The ones from the, from from this particular booklet that was given to us. That's not correct. That they're the only ones that have been revised. But they're 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 not revised because they're okay. verbatim of what they were before, except for maybe one extra sentence added. Then they were revised to you know, in a different board in 2006. One board. I have all full policies. One board of commissioners. So folks like you. See, gave me it. That's typically what people do to make an affirmative. But she does it all the time when you speak. Everything. I mean, it's a dog. I'm trying to make sure you're very hostile. Right. I find you're very hostile. I'm trying to explain to you. So in 2006, a separate board of commissioners that were elected officials for the Hadden Housing Authority put into in place the policy of that book that you're, that you're referring to. In 2016, another board of commissioners that were duly elected by the the residents of Hadley updated the policies, even if it's only one sentence. The policies have not been updated since 2016. My job as your executive director is to follow the policies of the Hadley Housing Authority, and that's exactly what we're doing. So on the window project, people have to move their stuff uh, 10 feet from the building? On both inside and outside, because there's abatement, and plus the the contractors need to get around with windows. Well, hold on. On the inside, if, uh, my understanding is it's three feet clearance on the inside because there's no way in a bathroom or bedroom or living room 
You could move it 10 feet away from the window. Can't carry it. Okay. What would you do? Yeah. Nothing. What would you do? No, 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 no. no. Okay. The mist tent. No, no, you're talking 10 feet away from the interior of the window would mean you had to move out of your bedroom. So my understanding from, from Mr. Budrick is that it's three feet clearance on the interior of the window in 10 feet on the exterior. That's not my understanding. But, but you, get... we would have to move out of the be the bedroom and the living room with all of our furnishings out of this if it was okay. 10 years. Yeah, so what you said. Do you see? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. is it possible, Pamela, for you to talk to Bruce? And if it is, in fact, three feet, if the contractor is okay with three feet. Yeah. Well, who's going to do it for these elderly people? Please, let me try to get my sentences out. I've had enough time. That's just it. You're for forgetting we're elderly and disabled. No, a lot of it. You're not removing a lot of it. I don't bet. So I will we'll check the rules to double check. And then let everybody know. They have the full bond. 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 It's all right. It's okay. So it's three feet in. My bed told me it's ten feet outside. Let everybody know. Three, three, not again, three feet outside. No, no, three feet inside, ten feet outside. Okay, five, ten, 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 feet. ten feet, ten feet. It's not because of, we have to Sorry. have asbestos mm -hmm. abatement, and it's under state law, and it has to be ten feet on the exterior. State law, it is state For law. Eight. Special. Governing asbestos Let's see that in right. Okay. And see what look at us. Guys, please, this is. As I am very. Just do my many good things. Oh, it's like, hang on a second. How are you? Just a point of information on the uh, grounds in this, ground in this policy thing. I think I read. Here you go. Ramp, right here. And the common area. I just. On the grounds policy, Pam. The grounds around each building are the property of the housing authority. That's great. The way I read that is from a unit's front door out, that's family housing authority property, and from the back door out is family housing authority property. So when the plants that are in front of the window, are going to be removed. On this, it says tenants will be charged for removal of any plant bushes. May I finish, please? So my question is, if that's had we housing authority property, why are the tenants going to be billed to have plants removed under their windows? So that's that doesn't make sense to me. So if you can explain sure. that, the, the tenants were allowed a, a small portion to do their gardening. Right. If they wanted to do gardening, they were allowed to do flowers. They were never supposed to put out hedges or bushes um, or trees. Or trees, but they were they were allowed to do some gardening. Um, we've been telling folks since last year into this year, don't plant anything that you don't want to lose. And then if you do have something planted that you want to save, you should be removing it. So that's where we're going to charge. We're, I'm not going to charge somebody for a bush. I'm going to charge somebody for items. That's what we're going to charge people for. So when tenants have shopping carts, target baskets, equipment that you're not using, have not used. Shopping carts like a Walmart cart. Yes. No, people, I'm, I mean, it's, it's, new. It's, I, it's new that I'm seeing target shop, shopping carriages, they full carriages. For years, I've been talking to a resident about shopping at the local Target. What do you call those? Little, those little, little shopping area. baskets you get when you go into Target. Right, right. But any of the items um, that are around the property on the outside, tangible items. Take them off. But there's so if tenants don't remove their own bushes, shrubs, or plants, even though that's Hadley Housing Authority property, you're going to charge the tenants to dig all that. So up. they again, the tenants would agree. No, I would not. I'm not going to charge anybody for evergreens, flowers, things of that nature. But to be clear, they're not housing authority. That's not housing authority property. The tenant put it in there. I, I mean, in theory. No, no. I mean, the ground zone where the right. thing is. That's exactly housing authority. It is right. right. So if something needs to be removed, 
from Canada Health and Authority property. My point is, why are the tenants going to charge? We would I'm according to this line here. Right. right. So it would be it's not it won't be the shrubbery and things. It will be tangible personal items. All right. I just want a clarification. Thank you. Okay, so we do have a little bit of action item here. It's three feet indoors and ten feet out, outdoors. And Bruce is sure the contractor is good with that. We have to let the tenants know. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gary, commissioner's discussion, right? Gary, okay. page K. I'm sorry, we do still just have the CFA amendment, the contract for financial assistance. That was under plan. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Which one is that? Is it this one? It's not all. Oh, it's for the job. I, I apologize. Okay. It's five. It's line item five. Would you mind like get that out of the way before we get into our debate? Sorry. Can we get? Can we just move this up to the so we can just get it out of the way? Yeah. You, just, you need a vote on that, or you need a signature on that? And and we the board needs to authorize you to sign it. Because we're receiving money from the new E O H L C. Yeah, they do have a new letterhead. I don't know if anybody. And we're getting one hundred sixty-three thousand ninety-nine dollars. Yep, and that is for fiscal year twenty-five and uh, eighty-one thousand nine hundred seventy-two thousand dollars, and fiscal year twenty-six eighty-one thousand one hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars. So this was part of the the, the five-year plan and our annual plan. Um, you're, when we put the, the capital projects all over five years, this is where that money comes from. So you need a vote to authorize you to sign it? You no, to authorize you to sign it, to accept, the, you, uh, to accept the amount of $163,099. Um, Your name is on page two there, at the bottom. See it? Oh, yeah. Can you, Reese, maybe you can make that motion of just that first paragraph. Okay. I move that. That we find amendment number number eight. number eight to the contract for financial assistance, the CFA, 5001 in the amount of $163,099, included for signatures, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts standard contract form and attachment A, additional terms and conditions, and CFA amendment, quote, amendment. This amendment funds the following and extends the contract dates of service from June 30th, 2024 to June 30th, 2026. I move that we vote to approve this, and then we separately will get his signature approved. Well, you could, and, and, authorize the and authorize the chair to sign the document. Yeah, I motion. Do we have a motion? motion? Yeah. Second? I'll do a second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I love it when we get money. <laughs> uh, back up to the management agreement. So I think what things star is start is, and I will make a motion that the board allows me to approach the chair of the Amherst Housing Authority Board of Commissioners to discuss renewing the management agreement between Adelaide. And Amherst Housing Authorities. So that is a motion. Do I have a second? No second to ask me to approach the chair? Okay. Well, we, do we need a first and a second to discuss? To discuss? Yeah. What, what's the motion again? That you uh, permit me as chair or one of you, if you'd like to insert your names, to approach the chair of Amherst Board of Commissioners and for discussion on renewing the management movement. Another suggestion might be that their board and our board meets to discuss any details on the management agreement. What's your what's your what's your goal? What's that? To yes. confirm that Amherst wants to renew the management agreement with Hadley. Well, they have the same problem and open dating law situation as we have. Uh, we need to, we first need to make the decision whether or not we want to renew. Then it, then it goes to them. We sign our part and then it goes to them and they decide whether they want to renew. So I'd like to hear from them that they want to renew before we start. 
But they well, they would have to vote on that, same as we did. They they don't file. They don't open meeting long, confer together before the. I would expect that to happen at the commissioner's board meeting. Exactly. So what I what I'm saying is that doesn't. I don't understand your purpose to do that unless you're just as a businessman trying to get a sense of things, because that's not how. I'd like to make sure there's two willing parties at the. No, no, I understand that. It's just that um, we need to make a decision whether or not we want to. How would you phrase it? Enter discussion or just we want to, on whatever terms they come up with, we're agreeable? The terms are already preset by uh, the Executive Office of the Housing and Livable Communities. There, there, it's a so you want to make a motion to renew the terms? Oh, okay. There. I thought you wanted to do that. I'm asking you. With so you don't think there's any discussion? You, we just stick with the existing agreement and renew it. No, I, I understand what you're saying, <laughs> and and from some point it may, it makes sense. But every one of us, as a board of commissioner, has already we already have a copy of all the documents related to the management agreement that was signed three years ago and we also either still have a blank in our uh binder a commissioner binder or we can see it easily online it is a a contract that's already set by the executive office of housing and little communities mm. and it's the template contract and all that needs to be done is Hadley Housing Authority, Amherst Housing Authority, you sign, the chair of that board signed, but it has to be backed up by a quorum vote. So the, the point I'm saying, and I think we should have lots more discussion before it should even come to a vote. So that's why I'm not making the motion that we, I think we should be having some discussion. But what? With, among ourselves. Okay, we don't have any There's no motion on the floor, so yeah. All right. And I would like to I remember when we did meet with the Amherst board and there was some discussion going back and forth. And I think at the time we'd have to look back in the minutes, but I do recall that I said I would want to save some of my comments with the oversight of Amherst and the administration to be put in an executive session. And that never took place. Um, because I think that there are some issues that should be ironed out between these commissions and the administration, the oversight, day-to-day -day oversight. So I don't know if that can take place or not. I don't know. But, but, that, so for but instance, that was not done. Yeah, but... It was instance, posted, but then it got re-pulled uh, back or something by the town administrator and the town yeah, clerk of town. But, but you just you know, said, do I have that correctly? It's correct because it doesn't. There's only five reasons why you can go into executive session if we didn't we didn't meet that qualification. How do we meet? How do we meet them? Because there are some issues I think should be discussed, but not in an open meeting. Uh, well, look, I need a clarification here because uh, I mean I I understood your point, and uh, you know what you asked for back then was very clear. I remember that. But now you're saying you want an executive session or you've asked for an executive session to discuss with the Board of Amherst about day-to-day -day operations, oversight of day-to-day -day operations. We don't get to oversee, as a Board of Commissioners, we do not get to oversee day-to-day -day operations. We have a management agreement. We have no... The, We're getting executive director. The executive director. The, you don't even get to oversee day to day operations of an executive director if we're freestanding. Well, my understanding was that in Hadley, the executive director reports to the Hadley Board of Commissioners. As I'm reporting to you right now. Yeah. yeah. If there's no difference. So if we have a request of her, we can make it to her. You know, and, um, yes, same as you can right now, but you can not oversee any executive director's yeah. rep management of her staff or his staff e even if you have an executive director those are some of the issues that we wanted to talk about it doesn't matter by law you can't that's the point if i can just point so the public housing notice for the, this information was given at the last board meeting there's information in there about um, a management agreement um an interim 
agreement. It could just need somebody to fill in and then hiring an executive director. All of that information is in there along with the templates for management agreement. And it's the template of, which is exactly what we're following, as well as a template for an executive director, which is exactly the, my contract with the Amherst Housing Authority is exactly the DHCD and oh. HLC template. Maybe, so, go ahead, Stu. Well, maybe three meetings back, I asked uh, Pam and Mary to create a list of what she felt as an executive director and what Mary felt as a director are the benefits of us staying with Amherst Housing. And I've never, we've never discussed this this I, because I thought, think it's important for you to tell us why we should stay with Amherst Housing. And and I was hoping that that list would, would come about and it never has. Would there be something that you, just like we asked the accountant, do you think it's better to stay with Amherst or go back to Hadley? You know, he said it's better to stay with Amherst. But he was looking at, you know, of course, strictly numbers because he's an accountant. So all I'm saying to you is are you going to, provide us with a list of why, what we get that we don't, if we don't, that we're getting from being with Amherst versus going back to. If you'd like me to give you another proposal, which is in your binder, of all the benefits of being in a management agreement, there's a three or four no, page. No, coming from you personally, it actually not, not from one coming from no, 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 excuse me. It actually did come from me personally. I put the work into the proposal in the management plan that I provided to the Hadley Housing Authority when they made the decision to come on board with the management group. That was my work. So that it's in there. If you'd like me to update it, I'll be happy to. Um, the reason why Mary Billion didn't give you that information is because Mary Billion is a staff member. And, she, and none of the staff can do what commissioners ask. And you asked him the best of a commissioner. So, so we're, we're not going to vote or take an action on the management agreement at this point is what I'm hearing. Would it be proper if I made a motion that whether we stayed with Amherst or didn't, but we have a short window now of 60 days. Mm -hmm. And if we wait till August and we decide as a board that we want to take back responsibility for our own affairs, our own complex facility, our tenants, et cetera, residents. We don't have a very large window. So is it appropriate if I made a motion to say we should at least have an advertisement in whatever papers for an executive director for the Hadley Housing Authority? And if we don't decide to take back responsibility for our own affairs and run our own complex, but we're, we're bumping up against a very short window. If the decision is not to stay with Amherst, 30 days is not going to cut it for us. Okay. Uh, Harry, have you looked at the rules and regulations for hiring an executive director after um, with the, or at the end of a management agreement with another agency? Mm -hmm. I do not believe that you can advertise for a position unless it, at the end of a management agreement, I mean, the management agreement is still going on. So you're saying you don't want to vote. You just want to go ahead and advertise. I didn't say I didn't want to vote. Dave is saying oh, we're okay. not ready to vote. And I'm thinking, but what you're telling me is we can't advertise because we're still under a two-month. Let's month. see what Pamela knows the rules. So what, I haven't seen the rules. What, what I just propose is that you continue. They go through the packet and that you, there, there's some criteria. I can give you the an updated management plan, please. Um, I would propose that you let that you vote to have your your chairperson talk to the other chairperson just to have a discussion between the two of them. Um, I've made a commitment to David as the commissioner or excuse me as the chair um, and Amherst is aware of it as well. So we're not going to walk away on the drop dead date on, on, on October 1st. It's not the right thing to do. So if the Hadley Housing Authority chose to go with an executive director, there could be an interim contract that is that's null and void or, or ends when you hire the new director. You have a time frame because you're going to need help posting the job description. You're going to have form. There's there's lots of regulations that you have to go through it. And we would remain as the management agreement managing agent while the Hadley Housing Authority did that work. 
that, because what the, the alternative that would happen is that we would walk out the door and then what's going to happen is DHCD is going to pick up the phone and call me and say, we mind staying until they find a new director, which is what's happening all over Western Mass. There's an executive director spots that are open that are either very quickly going to another housing authority, uh, a large, much larger housing authority, or the ED who is trying to retire is hanging around, or they're just, they have people going in and helping out. So Amherst will most certainly help out. There's no, um, well, it, it's it's better because Hadley is going into, you have to do your budget. Gary has to prepare the budget. And we're doing the same thing with um, Belchertown. It's- I only brought it up because it's a short window to the end of this exactly. contract. Right. Right. And that so sounds good. That proposal, I mean, that sounds wonderful. That way- well, That's what he wanted to do anyway. He wanted to meet with the chair of- Yeah, they bring up so- And yeah. you hit him with, why do you want to do that? What, you well, we had this wonderful discussion and everything's yeah. more clear now. I'm very glad to hear that we're not going to be left high and dry. Yeah. I think that's what I'm I talked recently. She did tell me that. Not, don't worry about, you know, getting shut out. So I probably should have brought that up earlier. So if that's okay with you, I guess I have to make a motion. Yes, I do. I'm going to repeat the original motion is that and anybody can come with me who wants me in. More than two want to come. I'll. I'll then it has to be a posted I'll meeting. I'll post. Uh, I'll post the meeting. I'll let Michael know that it's a posted meeting, and he can bring whoever he wants. And if he wants to bring any board member in Amherst that is not in favor of re-upping with Hadley, uh, he can bring here along as well. So I'd like to start by allowing me to make a phone call with Michael. I think he's back from Italy, and. I've met with him twice before. He's extremely gracious, knowledgeable, intelligent man. Um, I would welcome the chance to talk to him and confirm that Amherst wants to re-up with Hadley. His first thing to me might be, I don't know, I need to bring it to my next meeting. Have they already met this week? No, we're, we're actually meeting next Monday. All right, next Monday. So he, I assume, would bring it up next Monday to his board, get the go-ahead to keep going with Hadley. But wouldn't he have notified you by now if he wasn't interested in, in staying? It's not That's a kind of question I'm not going to it's try to It's not his just started the process. Okay, let's, yeah. that's it. Let's stop this. Yeah. Just so, is it okay? I'd like to make a motion again that myself and anybody would like to join me, one other person, uh, maybe we should decide that tonight, today, uh, meet with the chairman of the Amherst Housing Authority and ever anybody else he would like to bring. And if we have more than two people from each side, I'll boost the meeting. So that's the motion, is that I'm going to contact the chair of the Amherst Housing Authority, let him know that we're interested in re-upping. And if he has issues, to let me know or discuss with his board and get back and start the ball rolling over between now and our next meeting. So we know where Amherst stands. So Amherst meets next Monday. We're meeting on Monday. So after you do this, or if you do this before next Monday, yeah. you know, the rest of this week, would you call a special meeting the first week of August because you will have had discussion with the chair or anybody else that had that meeting? Yeah. Or it yeah. needs to be posted because more people want to participate. You don't violate the open. I think that's a great idea. I think here. posting it and having more people involved than just yourself is a good idea. Do that. Ask him. Tell well, him we met with this before, and I thought it was productive. Yeah, it was good to get to. We should do that with them every quarter or something anyway. So that's the motion now is to have me contact the Chairman of the Housing Authority and get permission to set up a public meeting for both boards to meet. Anybody who can come. So that would be the first week of August. First week of August. What's that? If it works with their schedule. Yeah, I'm gone the second week, the last week of August, by the way. When we meet, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have an agenda when you go? I mean, is it an impromptu meeting or is it going to be an agenda meeting? It will be an agenda meeting. It probably only has one item on the agenda. So shall we do this? I'll second the motion. Okay, any other discussion? So the idea right now is that I contact Michael Burkhardt. We try to set up a date and a time for a public meeting. Anybody can come from both boards. Okay. We have last Tuesday, August. Oh, so, 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 so
if, if it's, oh yeah, when everybody looked at the August, think about the first week of August. Are you suggesting? Are you around, Pat? I am. It fits. It fits. Do you even want to be there? Yeah. You yes. Want to if it's there. more than two people on a board meeting, he has to host it. Yeah, as a public meeting. Say second week of August. Alex, oh, please. First week. I oh first week of August. Okay, I'm yeah. here the second week of August. Yeah. Okay. Well, August first is a Tuesday. July thirty first is what time? Uh, what time are we talking? It, it might be in the Amherst. Depending it, on what the Amherst were, they might might just you don't understand what I'm saying. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. When this, but it needs to be. It needs to be. It has to be posted. The public because it is. But it's it needs to be recorded. I don't know if you can tell a place. It needs to be here. Can that all work That's without you being there? It can. I got trained. But then it won't be. May no, have been live here for months, Judy. Huh? May have been live here for months, Judy. They've been reported and then televised later. We did it in an executive session. You can't walk. Well, you need a certain Because it reason. doesn't meet the criteria for it. You have to say, like, we don't want to work it's, with it's Emma Rogers. This, so no, I just. We don't think she's a good person. No one so. said that. It's just a matter of right. being able to discuss. It doesn't meet the criteria. Right. All right, so let's make a walk. It's Tuesday the 1st. Hey, guys, please. Can everybody tell me what day they're not available or they are available during the first week of August? I'm not available the second. August 2nd, you're not available? Nope. That's a Wednesday? In the evening or all day? Oh, I'm available. What's the first week? Oh, that's a select for the second. Select board? No. No, not at all. Select board night. Say it again? It's a select board night. Select. But during the day, are you available no. August 2nd? No. Okay, anybody else? Richie, two weeks available the first or the third. So tell me when you are available. Uh, the fourth or that next week, but you're not it needs available to be that next week. week. August the fourth is the only day next week. Well, uh, he's not available. I'm available on the to be second fourth. and fourth, but Alex isn't available on the seventh. I'm available the fourth. What? I'll do it on Friday. Okay. okay. Yes. What? Okay. I'll be doing it all. Friday meeting. Okay, he says the fourth works for him. Yeah. Oh, Harry's left the room. This so, uh, Sue and Richie, what day next week? I don't know. I don't have a calendar. I should be all set next week. But how's the fourth for you? Friday the fourth. Well, my wife's still over here. You, so, yeah, okay. you, you can put down Richie. If he's still alive, he, he'll come on the fourth. So, don't be looking for you again, Richie. What's going on? When's the meeting? Uh, Harry, are you available on Friday, August 4th? You got a game? It's Friday. Oh, so. What time? Morning? It's uh, undetermined so far. Yeah, I suppose so. Harry, okay. Sue, so you have to look. David's going to be okay. Pretty sure. Any special time we should suggest? Remember, Can they do one? They typically do one. They can do 11 or 1 usually. Well, I can get out of the We have a couple new board members, one's retired, she can't listen to the work. Okay, so I'm going to be, 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 be suggesting Friday. I'll be suggesting Friday, August 4th. Pretty much any time during the day here, really. When? Friday, August 4th. Morning is better. Morning is better. I have late afternoon commitments. Okay. Today you so you're gonna check and let me know soon. Yeah, but when it's mess though. I mean not really like ten is like I'm not going ahead and call them. I'm taking off tomorrow morning for two days. So uh, I gotta try to reach it today. We can be going there or that's from stops. We don't know. I'll be back tonight. And Mr. Chair, if it needs to be televised or recorded, I'm not available next um, the second week of August for I'll be on vacation. Right. So Friday, August fourth. You could either set up a camera or be here. I could be there, yes. Okay. Amherst does not video on their meetings. I do not. Yeah. Shocking. Needs to be here. What's that? Needs to be here. Here? Well, somewhere. I'll request here. that, but if they're the bosses. They, they're the bosses. They came last time. They came last time, right. So, and we might meet over at the senior center. Or no. We might meet in If it's at the so I'll see if um, I should do this right. I'll see if the 
top so that's from in the senior centers of middle one. So I think you had a motion and a second and a discussion, so you just need a vote. We have a vote. All in favor of doing this, having the meeting with Amherst? Aye. 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 Thank you. Nay. You know that for talking with Amherst? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what else did we have? Sorry. So you have the AP policy subcommittee report and then the commission in discussion. Then you have the public comments. Okay, so just very quickly, I'll be happy to know that on the policy and procedure committee, our subcommittee, we are, uh, Rich and I are on the policy and procedure subcommittee. We can only have two people on the committee because of quorum rules. So we are meeting next week, I believe. And uh, what we're initially planning to do is go through all the local policies and procedures and see what is needing updated, just an initial look through. And then our plan is to involve, uh, we want tenant input. Uh, we'll probably, uh, you know, with the staff, probably have uh, tenant chats on, on specific policies. We'll resume that work I started last, I believe it was October. So okay, we look forward to seeing your revisions. Yeah. I was under the impression that some committees are not subject to the open meeting law. If you have a document you can show me that is wrong, is very well maybe wrong. I think like to see that the authority oh, okay. for that place. And I'd like to know when they, when we voted on the subcommittee. Is I in the only got to be here. And why, I, I don't know if you ever have. Isn't there a certain no, 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 to no, 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 committee? No, no, she's on so I don't think there is. We can discuss that. Well, I don't think it's you and I. Because I think there's unfairness on this board. If she's on so many committees, and Gary and I. It's in the elementary. It's in the The vote on the Council Procedure Committee is in a minute. Yeah, but we don't, I don't remember it. And how we can all just look at an old vote? We can always look at an old vote and see if anybody wants to change it. Yeah. I have one question before we talk to public comments. Yeah. Even though Commissioner Oppenheimer voted no not to meet with Amherst. Does that mean you will not attend the meeting? No, it means I don't. I think it's Which a waste of meet. I believe you are. Okay. I just think that it's a good waste of time. Just but, like gonna, it, but you'd like to be here. Yes, just like I feel with having Garrett here for the second time, basically. Well, thank you for staying in big while Garrett is here. Huh? So, if you want to put all the stuff. He said exactly. He said the more stuff. 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 He said these are speakers to a lot of be respectful comments will be taken under advisement. So we may not respond to your comments today. Anything on anybody's mind? Thank you for coming. It's important that people come. Would you like to return? Yeah, I'd like to say Please. Did you identify yourself? Yes, my name is Talene Rosenthal, better known Helene Rose. Um, I'd like to uh, say that I've been um, aware of Golden Court for around 10 years now, and I'd like to address some of the uh, ways that tenants are treated here. Um, I resent uh, strongly the newsletters. I do not resent newsletters, but I resent newsletters that have too many, too many threats and punishments, too many rules that are not logical to me, too many of this mentality that if you don't do something, you're going, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And um, I also would like at this point to state that I don't care for the timing. I think the uh, people uh, in, in this excessive heat being uh, working with their gardens, I think that this should have been done in the fall or another time. I think that um, as I read these newsletters, they are not... Uh, very nice to tenants. They're all condescending. They uh, just really, uh, I was head of a condominium association in Florida. I live here in town and I just really think that it's not respectful to tenants the way all of these um, 
things are being done. And I don't think I should admit it. I want to make sure somebody else has a chance. Sure. Do me a favor. Yes. Or us a favor. Yes. If there's specific things that use letter that you yes. find uh, should have been written differently, could you please uh, make a copy, make a comment, and tell us in writing what it is that disturbed you? Yes. And then we can discuss that. But I will put it in writing. Thank you for letting me speak at this time. No problem. Anybody else have any comments? Judy. Um, you identify yourself, please. Yeah. We Judy, know you. Judy, Judy Ronkali, Golden Court. Um, last meeting, I brought up the arrangement of the table, that it should be over here. Oh. It was agreed to happen. I think you said that was a good idea, and we'd like to follow through with that. As you can see, that hasn't happened. Well, would you like a horseshoe? Uh, well, you know, if people just, if the board sat on this table, you, you'd be able to see each other. This, you're not seeing what's going on down this end. That's and it's inappropriate. <laughs> so what, how can we see each other on that straight table any better than we can see Because you have one, two, three people here, one on each end. Right, it was, it was far up, and it was, then you had your back to the residents, right. which they complained about. Right. Most of the meeting, I've sat here, because I like to see my fellow commissioners. Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't found this to be in any way an inconvenience to the camera. He, no, he not not takes it. Hello, how are you? <laughs> you know, are so put these two tables yeah. like this, and maybe that might help it. Can be be about us seeing each other? Yes. Oh, yes, because yes, they hide. I've never seen him. I mean, I, I look without you. are not hiding. We're just separate. Well, I'm just teasing. I didn't really mean Well, they got a separate. Yeah. They got a separate conversation going on down here that the rest of the board can't see okay and so if this table can't be used then we need to bring it use the round tables okay but if it also um brings respect when people are looking eye to eye at each other so rather than right. this and tenants aren't coming anymore because they, they're not interested in abusing so and i anymore so it's not a problem and if we have a whole slew of tenants, you will set up the chair so you can sit. You know. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Raised. I have a couple more comments. Okay, quickly, please. Thank you. Um, the fact that we don't have a property manager and the office isn't open. Um, it's inconvenient for tenants, especially tenants that aren't able to use the phone system which there are many. It, it's so complicated, so new age. Yeah, I'm willing to ask that question to you. Do you own a new property manager or what is she? We have a rent collection, or a rent recertification coordinator that started this. That's the one I met here. Is that a tenant? Is it a tenant? It's a it's a new employee. Is it a tenant? I can't give you that information. I I, I do not appreciate having another tenant set in my financial. 760 CMR 6.10 subsection 10, which is state regulations law for public housing for elderly and disabled folks, says that residents have a preference in hiring. And why are you it telling is, us who it is? I'm not telling you who it is. I said we have a new person, and you're telling me that we shouldn't hire a resident. No one said that. We just said, why can't she you? She just said that, ma'am. I can she say that. She just said that. So there is a preference in hiring in public housing to hire other residents. To hire residents. So we have a big red recertification clerk, and Mary Billion is going to be taking care of the lease members. Okay. Um, so personally. can we can we assume that that person is Corey? Every employee of the housing authority is Corey, and that's yes. embedded into does a bad. And this new employee, but you're saying she's been hired to do recertifications. What about a property manager? That's Mary Billion will be taking over those responsibilities. To be taking you mean during the week. Or are you just talking oh, about Monday and Friday? What is your definition of the week if it's not Monday? Monday and Friday. Is so over. it's the hours right now are, are those are the hours right now because when I had an application coordinator there, I would have tenants, some very specific tenants that would come in and call them stupid because they didn't know the answer to the question that they were asking. So it doesn't at this point it doesn't look only the Amherst Housing Authority to staff with when tenants are being abusive towards the staff. You can pick up a phone, That's good. you can send, it's, it's a very good explanation here. You can pick up the phone, you can send an email. We are available Monday through Friday. I'm here, but there are 
40 something tenants here. Right, and we find Many that the majority them, of our tenants are Excuse me, I'm still talking. Early. I'm still talking. Many Please don't raise your voice to me, ma'am. Don't yeah. call me ma'am. And when I'm Judy. talking, you need to be quiet. Judy, please. No. no. Please. Manners. Yeah. David, manners. Okay. They're what else did you non-existent have? in this group. Um, I guess I want to ask the executive director what rule, uh, what state whatever, uh, you violated by ex by discussing my personal information with the board member. Can I let that discussed at this board meeting? I'm sorry. You have a question for me? You can yeah. pick up the phone and you can send an email. That's day-to-day -day operations. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, I think you're very sure. No, I'm sure. Oh, yes, you are. Call me. Call me. You, call me. you certainly yeah. are. Do you may have something. You may not. If you do, um, I don't think the commissioner should be sticking their noses. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Mm -hmm. you know? Grace, what do you mean? Grace? Yes, please. My name is Grace Briggins. I'm a defined good report. So my question is, Leave me alone. Let me talk. No, can you raise your voice? I'm just hard of hearing, Grace. I'm going to move so I can hear you. Okay. I want to hear what you have to say. I've been losing my ears. You can ask my wife. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is that one, we have the tenant have a representative, as they said. But I don't know the representative of the tenants. Like he said, the board. I don't know who is representing. Like if uh, tenants have consigned, or you are in the board meeting like this, there is a person who is representing the tenants that can talk for us. Research. I don't She's know. Talking about you? I don't. I, I don't. I'm not quite sure. But yes, I'm the representative of the tenants and yes if you have something you could come tell me and and then i can uh talk to the chair and say let's put this on the agenda kind of thing so we can work on problems i can also give you information i can refer you to the appropriate person uh say it's uh you need to talk to Pamela or but, someone on the staff about a problem you're having. I can give you information. If, you, if you've if you got other concerns, you can certainly tell me, and then I can bring them to the chair and say, we need to put this on the agenda. Do you know how to get yeah, up? Because if you are the representative of tenants, I have been coming to this meeting or something like that. And when it, if I just I said something the other June, they said it's not for the board or something like that. Because what I'm saying is, if you are a representative of the tenant, with the way I'm saying things, it seems as if you take up the responsibility of the staff, that is of the administration, yeah. than the the tenant you have to represent, listen, because there are some questions here, some answers that Pamela and Mary are supposed to answer. You answer everything. I don't know whether you work with them or you are for us. I don't I know whether the tenant, the tenant appointed I you. I don't have to answer that. Let you finish. Yeah. Oh, my yes. I don't know whether the tenant appointed you to be our mouth speaker in a case like this. And if it is, I have not seen any, I have not seen any one point that you have supported us. Because if they bought or anything bring out about Tena, you are against us. I don't know. That's why I don't know who is the board uh, representative for tenants. And the man sitting down there, I was thinking, he is the board representative because he doesn't say anything. He does not contribute. But when they say vote, he does not be sad. What what is he voting for? I don't I don't understand. I don't understand this board. Because if it is five people's board members, 
One to represent the staff. Well, sorry, please, not staff, the tenant. Then he's still a board member, he can still vote. That man there at the last one, is it just to complete the pipe? Or is I don't know because since I've been coming to this meeting, he has not said a word. But if he said to vote, he is first person to ring up his hand. <laughs> I don't know what is going on, please, because I am confused. I have to, the, the, the staff there, I don't know what to say. You understand? I don't really know because I'm confused. We are just living in this area like a dead people. There is no life, nothing. Yes. And the representative of the staff of our tenant supposed to fight for us and talk to the office. For us, yeah. but it seems as if he, she's not doing it. If it's really right. our representative, David. Let me so I know they said it's not for board, but I have to bring it out. If you can discuss it in your secret board meeting about this, because we don't have representative yet of the of David. the tenants. Just rebuttal, yeah. Reese. It, it's not a rebuttal, it's an explanation. Grace, you and I have talked several times and you've told me about some of your concerns. I've given you information. I've. But I don't know if you are able to speak it. to me. It is my turn to speak. Now, here, I am a, a commissioner on the Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. That is. The number one responsibility I have to, I have a fiduciary duty, which means legal and financial on this board. I represent the experience of tenants. I do not uh, do a staff person's job to uh, help a tenant with their issues other than I can provide information and point you to where it needs to go. What you're talking about is you want a group of people to represent tenants, like somebody you can go to and say, I'm having this problem. I don't like this. Why is that like that? Right? The Board of Commissioners is not the place for that. It's an LTO. So Judy knows about LTOs. Suze knows about LTOs. There's a lot more reading. There's a lot of people that know about local tenant organizations and how to found them. Get together with them and start an LTO because they are who is legally supposed to do what you're saying. You are not supposed to do that. No, I can't do some of the stuff you're talking about. It's not legal. It's not allowed. For you to, to talk about us. But I, can't, I can't do the kinds of things you just mentioned. As a board of commissioners, I can represent to the board of commissioners the tenant experience, like what's it like for you as a tenant being here? What are you hearing from the tenants? I can do that, but I can't do some of the things you think I should do. It's not legal for me to do that. Does that make sense? Who is to do that? This staff? No, the local tenant organization. But we don't have one here. Get out there and start one. You don't have anyone here. We don't have a local tenants organization. Maybe you could talk to Risa about how to. Yeah, that's what I he said. We don't have because I was thinking somebody appointed to represent us in the person that can, we can go and meet and do this. Yeah. But she said no, that she is not in charge of that. Right. And what? So with, with all due respect, the Board of Commissioners is a, is a legal body. They're elected officials or appointed by the town to run the housing authority. They run the housing authority. They're not in charge of tenants. Good board, they're not in charge of tenants. They're in charge of the finances of the housing authority and putting it together, putting together policies that are fair and consistent to tenants. And that are applicable to the law of the housing of, of in Massachusetts. They're all volunteers, so it's 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 a little it's hard for me to hear criticism for the volunteers that work for us, works work with us. Um, the other thing is that commissioners are good public housing advocates. 
So they can advocate for public housing as a whole. They do not advocate for an individual tenant. There's a huge difference. No, it, not been that it, it, but, but when a tenant comes to a commissioner with an individual problem, that crosses a line. It does. A, a commissioner is a well, public that housing line for my. No, no for, for, all, for no. all commissioners. But that's so that's where you need an LTO and the L, the regulations support an LTO. Um, a while back, um, Jane Nevin Smith was trying to work with the tenants here to try to form an LTO. There was a good number of people that yeah. were meeting, and for whatever reason, it never got off. No, there was well, well, there was at least a dozen people, and it never got off the ground. I, now I understand because I will say our representative and the board supposed to take our concern. That was my belief. For well, right now, I have. Your concern should come to the office first. And so if you have a problem, you should go through the office. And then if somebody in the office doesn't give you the right answer, you can come to me and I'll get you the answer. Harry, question. In lieu of a local tenants organization that could be formed or currently they don't have them. At some point, Rich's term ends next year in 24, a tenant like Sue and Tracy ran for John Allen C. So a tenant could run for Richie's position. If I step down or finish out my term, another tenant could run for my position. That's right. And Dave, who's the governor's appointment, the governor could appoint another tenant. Right. And you could have five tenants on this board of commissioners representing their own facility, their own complex, mm -hmm. and you still are administrating uh, from Amherst, but you'd have five tenants here, and you don't need a tenant organization because you have five tenants on the board. Well, there, so a ten, a ten, is that it something? absolutely could happen because a tenant is a resident of the town of Hadley. Again, it's elected or appointed positions. Right. So as residents of Hadley, they could be appointed. Um, what a tenant's organization, sometimes it helps with frustrations for tenants that they're able to commit back and forth, so to speak. Um, but as far as a voice, this board of commissioners allows a public comment portion on the agenda. Not all housing authorities allow that. But this board does. That's an outlet that you can come in with a public comment. When you have an LTO, the only thing that is allowed by the LTO by regulation, and that again is under 760 CMR 6.08, is um, that they are able to come and they can talk about the specific agenda items of that specific agenda. And they also have, um, a, a, I wouldn't say stronger input, but they have input into that annual plan and the capital plan. There's a segment for tenant participation through an LTO that way. Other than that, you coming to this meeting and voicing your concern is is just it's, as valuable. It's, it's, it, it's just as valuable. Because everybody is, here, everybody is here in concert for the good, safe, and secure pe place for people. This is their home. This is exactly. where they live. This is their residence. That's so if you had five tenants, on the board, and you had it, even if you had an LTO, it's it's their complex, it's their facility. So you want to so uh, one of the things we brought up at many meetings to Pam and to address what you're saying is there's so many people in Amherst with so many job descriptions, but who is for tenants? There isn't anybody that we can run to form a tenants association, but you still have to work with management. There isn't anybody that isn't met, that works for the housing authority in any capacity where tenants can go to and voice their concerns. It always goes back to the management. And if management is part of the concern, then we're just talking in circles. So when people go see people in town and say, this and this is happening, we're getting threatening notices, and that our things are going to be thrown away. But it's a policy, yes, but a policy that was written in 2007, 20 years later being enacted. If this policy was such an important policy, then why weren't our things thrown out years ago? Why, why were we allowed 20 years after this policy was written 
that we were still allowed to have barbecues. We were allowed to okay. have, okay. and we were allowed to have. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I agree that we have problem when we go to the office. Right. But in when the way I know about administration, you don't go to the administration or the office with anything. You talk to your people first. That is why I said yeah. who is the head of the tenant? Because you go to the head of the tenant first. I have this problem. How do you think I can tackle it? Then they will advise you. It is that advice now you take to the to the office. Right. But if I have any grievance, I just go straight to the ten, uh, to the office, and they say what I did not want to say. The police is a great person. No, you, but she but said it's not for wrong. That was the that problem. That is not what I said. You can come to me with anything. I will help you with whatever. It's just that your expectation of a board of commissioner who also happens to be a tenant. I'm trying to explain to you. It's it's not how this works. But I, as a tenant, because I'm on the Board of Commissioners, I know an awful lot about the rules, the laws, et cetera. And not just, not just you. because she's on the Board of Commissioners. She spends a lot of time studying the rules and regulations and the state um, expectations. So she understands the rules. Let me put it to you that way. So if you go to her and say, hey, I'm a tenant and I have a problem with this, she'll explain to you uh, what you can do about it. Yeah, that's what I said. I about cut off in the middle of what I was saying. Okay. I was in the middle of a sentence. I just wanted to say that because of the fact that we recently have been letting people know that this, that our items that we've been using for years, our tools, our barbecue grills, an extra table in the back we might sit in the morning that's not blocking anybody. Is This is a 2007 original policy that was written, I tell you, I, I brought this up in so many means, written by one board member when we had an active mm -hmm. tenants association. Right. The tenants association wasn't involved in these policies. It wasn't, policy. policy. it it wasn't was revised in 2016, and that was not no, revised. No, it was revised. Not really, sure. because they were... Yeah, because they, because, of the fact, because we're letting people know out there in the community that they want to throw our things away that we're using. Things okay. that tenants yeah. use. People use their barbecue grill. You can go home in New York. So you, you have to move have, your grill 10 feet from the building. Well, you can't have them. And, oh, they're going to be thrown away. It's just nothing to do with the window project. Yeah, not totally we, we have two projects going on. We have the window She's project where we have to remove our plants. We have a window project where we have to remove our plants. That's fine because... It, we wish it would have been in the spring or fall. I'm talking about above and beyond that. Anything we own in the front or back that we might utilize, garden tools, barbecue grills, an extra table and chair that are not blocking anybody, is going to be thrown into a dumpster. This has nothing to do with it. That's what's happening. I thought you have to move it away from it. That's a different project. These are two projects in one. This isn't just coming after tenants because the so there's a case that is this is important. Uh, Jackie a has a question. This is tenant abuse. It is let's have Jackie intervene here. I guess they, they, they have to understand yeah. this is so two fun. projects. <laughs> right. What's the procedure if someone has a question about a policy? Does it get brought back to the next board meeting for consideration? First thing I would do is ask Pamela. I read yeah, it this way to send me this. She's, she's in charge of making sure that the policies trickle down to management operations. So if someone's upset about having to move a barbecue or throw away no, a barbecue. It's not removing the difference. Now, there are, now we're in my question, okay. just procedure wise. Apparently, there's a board member with a concern about. A particular policy. Yeah. It was never done. What's, the, right. what's the procedure? But I'm asking you, Mr. Chair. I quick answer. I think I know she has it. I think I understand what she's asking. Okay. So the procedure in my mind would be if it has to do with the operations and the management of the housing authority, you go to management and you say, hey, this is happening and I have a problem with that or don't understand that, and you get an answer. If you don't like that answer, 
Do you feel like the policies you know, aren't being followed or are wrong or incorrect? You would ask Vic to go on the agenda for the two issues. I understood that there is a, a person who feels that a policy is wrong. And it's our stuff is going to be thrown on, away. On, August 4th. Hold on. Right. Hold on. Your policy is wrong. So, therefore, what the person would need to do is bring it to the board and say this policy is wrong. Is that yeah. After clarification from After others. clarification. Yeah. But she's, no, that's not correct. But she's using, but if you're it's going to the person, speak. If you're going to, you? I'm talking now. Okay. If but, you're going to the person that's allowing a policy that was considered null and void by attorneys years ago, this particular policy book was considered null and void by attorney because it was written by one board member when you had an active tenancy. So all these years they keep waiving these same policy. Nothing's ever done. Now this policy, 20 years later, is resurfacing. To the detriment of tenants, this is two projects. We have the window project that we're moving our things for in this middle of summer when everything's in focus. But we, they also are going after at the same time anything we have outside our, our units. It's going to be thrown away. This is happening in August. Who's have going you discussed this with management? Too? Yes. And you told them what? She said she just sticks to the gun that our stuff's going to get thrown away. You know, hang on a second. Sorry. Commissioner Oppenheimer has not reached out to me about this. And again, Commissioner Oppenheimer is incorrect. The policy that the Amherst Housing Authority is following is the Hadley Housing Authority policies that were written in 2016. They were rewritten. It was never legitimate in the first place. You were writing a policy that was already said that was not going. These went on an agenda in 2016. They went on a legal agenda, a board of commissioners that were duly elected by the residents of the Ad of Hadley approved these. These are policies. That's the exact procedure for a policy. You weren't here, yes, Pamela. Ma we were told Ma these were not. Pamela, you were not here. It well, does, we were told I'm this not, was not. Ma'am, I'm not using that Ma policy. You have I'm, a name, right? It's so kind of right. it's, again, in that I'm not going to stop this. It's complication. Okay, it's too hostile. I don't think we need to stop. Okay, we're not getting anything. We keep trying. We saved our things before the policy. Our things are going to be thrown yeah. for dumpster. Yeah. Things that we use. You tools and barbecue. You can't put your tools away? No, they won't leave, let us leave anything outside. Front or back that we've used for years. You don't have room for tools? We're not allowed to. Have, that's what you're missing. He doesn't understand. We're not allowed to have anything in the front and back that tenants use. Flower pots. Soil. Grills, everything's going to be thrown into a dumpster. It has nothing to do with the window project. This is above and beyond. It's inhumane, and they're going to do it, and nobody is helping us. All right, so we're going to hear research. So I don't think that's Yeah, there, there's two things. Uh, some of the things, of course, I don't want to cause any problem for the crews that are coming in to do the windows. This is not already me. seen that we need 10 feet outside and 3 feet yeah, inside. Get that, then I will be a great... I will be bringing some things in, and other things, I'm moving them 10 feet away, putting them in a small area so that it's clear these are things that I will put back in my garden once that... I think the problem is, is that some folks have a... See, I've got stuff that were, were in my garden, that my little 3 by 10 spot right in the back. I take that, I have to take that out of the garden and make 10 feet of clearance for the crews, right? So I brought those about 15, 20 feet away from the building. And then immediately after the windows are, are replaced, I put it, I put those pots of flowers back in my so garden. You are not having anything thrown away. Yes, right. I won't have anything. She's not being truthful. There's two things going on here. There's a garden project where we have to remove everything out of our garden. Then above and beyond that, and that's what you're not talking about. They are coming after tenants, things that we've used for years. If we have an extra table in the back and chairs, if we have an umbrella, if we have a grill. If we have tools, this is not the garden project. This is okay. above and beyond. Okay, mm -hmm. you say okay, but we don't have time to save our things. It's benefit. not okay. So no, these things are going to be thrown away. Space. space. So, and and so what what you're saying is well, Judy, okay. hang on a second, Judy, please. And uh, are things being thrown away? Yes, for the, for the window project, things. Not talking. Ma'am, can you stop? 
For the window project, things would be far away if they weren't moved. There's other, there's lease enforcement that's been going on for the past year. No, um, we, there were, most of the is, we've had tenants that had Christmas lights that were up that needed to be removed. We had tenants that had a recliner out on their front stoop that needed to be removed. Tenants that were going after, a tenant that has target shopping carts or an excess amount of, or their, their laundry cart with their laundry, excess chairs, four, five, six chairs outside, it needs to be removed. They're encroaching into the walkways. It's not true. And we no. are. That's, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's not, not that's that's exactly what we're talking about. We have people walk around. We have people who did walk, walk around. around. Walk around. You did walk around on last Saturday, you and another commissioner. We walked around with a senior center woman, and she said she didn't see anything that was blocked so or, or. I don't run the senior center. I can't comment. But you're like looking like a user and the, to the community. I'm not an abuser. Yes, I'm you are. When you're getting rid of things, of people you're an abuser. You are. I right. hope the line, we're, so. we're enforcing the lease, the contract for your tenant. Huh? Well, she's abusing us. No, she's sending not. letters out that she does. And this I is the kind of letters we get all the time. I didn't send that letter out. I think we need a vote of no confidence for Sue Oppenheimer as a member of the Board of Commissioners and the Oh, yes. Because this is ridiculous. Because you don't want to talk about what's happening. I don't. I want you to stop attacking. Well, I want the Board of Commissioners. You and you attack. Guys, it's embarrassing for everybody. Right. All right. It's so, our, our stuff is being thrown away. Would you, why don't you, would you put you into writing what you feel is the abuse or the mistakes that management are making? Put it into writing, Susan, okay? So we have a document with the accusations in it, and we can address it as a document. As a, when are you going to address it when things are going to be thrown away in a week? Are you going to, uh, why do you have this time to say things? Why don't you work it out with management because you don't throw away things that you don't want thrown away? Yeah, or maybe you can ask a neighbor to hold them for you. What are they going to throw away of yours? Um, I think I have to go over and look at, should I not talk to her about this? Maybe I don't want like you to do it. You're the person that's causing the problem. Why would I Excuse like you me. to be the person? It's, it's my job to enforce it. And as a commissioner, Excuse you're me. supposed to. I did that because I don't want trouble. Yeah. You understand? Because if you put Christmas decoration in your apartment, I didn't put it in no that person's apartment. They said that you remove it. And if I don't remove it, I will be I will yeah. be thrown away from here. I don't know what you call it. I will be, I will be, uh, uh, you get a very quick. If I don't remove the Christmas something, I was not feeling good. I'm not feeling fine because I was ready to fight it to the end that I'm not going to remove it. But I just let it go. But I mean, I just made measures of it now, which just make my mood to be very bad because it seems as if they, they do it, they did that. Because of my days, you understand? Because of what? My days. They asked you to move Christmas decorations inside your unit? No, uh, yeah. It's a the, the, that is my porch. My porch. One, there is more than one resident. That is my Seven. porch. Where is my She's porch? speaking. The ceiling. Yeah. The ceiling where I live. Mean. You're so rude. That is my tenant. That is my house. Oh, that is my apartment. <laughs> they asked me to remove it. And they wrote me a letter, if I don't remove it, I will get, 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 right. get a quick notice. Right. Always. Okay? Always. I remove it. I remove it because my son, son, my son told me he doesn't want trouble yet because, okay. of okay. because of my head. Because of my head. I just have one thing to say. Please. I didn't know it was a body. They asked me to move that to the I'm going to put more in here. I want to say that I was the commissioner. I was the commissioner. You know that. I was the commissioner that came down and walked around because I wanted to understand the policy that was in force, what was considered Hadley Housing Authority property. And I raised it earlier in the meeting about the tenants not being charged for removal of their things. But I was the commissioner that came down here on my own, wanted to walk around and understand the policy. 
but they, that should be for the record. I was the commissioner. Okay, thank you. Did everybody know? Now, let me just say, when you were down here walking around. Yes, for me. Did you go behind my apartment? Yes, I did. Because, I because this spring, I ordered a table and chairs with cushions on them for comfort, which I certainly need. And are there a few more chairs, and they're out there. It cost me something to do that. Now what? What? I, 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 I can't have those. They're not in the way of anybody. Is it four chairs? Or is it two chairs? Well, it's two chairs and one that was out front. Yeah, you know, I so I can remove them. Well, as we, as we were saying earlier, you just move it. It's just going to be moved away from the building. Away from the building. Just over yeah, just 10 feet away from the building. Okay. And, and to stay there. No, 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 they didn't come back once those windows that we have been. Oh, well, yeah, it won't really be here. You're going to be fine. Okay. There's a giant screen screen for 20 years. No, no, no. Listen. Can I say something? Just some of the words. I want to say the rest. Yes. Mr. Okay, guys, I gotta call the meeting. Words, well, okay. Too much noise. I'm sorry. Sure. This thing. Motion to we, adjourn. I second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.